What if Naruto was transported to the DC Universe final part? Start. What do you think they're talking about? Tsunade asked Kakashi who, like her, had been watching Diana pull a reluctant-looking Naruto away with Kara taking some sort of cue to follow only seconds after. The silver-haired man snorted. It's more of an argument than anything. As far as I can hear, it's between the two ladies. Naruto's just watching. What are they arguing about? Kakashi hummed. Polygamy, I think. Something about Diana not liking the thought of sharing him with other women. Who does? Tsunade let out an amused sound. But I can see why Naruto wouldn't want to talk about that. That's quite an uncomfortable topic. Kakashi hummed noncommittally. Polygamy wasn't much of an issue in their world since many ninjas didn't even date, much less get married. Bloodline continuity aside, what was the point of having a partner and a child when you knew you wouldn't have time for them and your next mission could be your last? Some just didn't like the idea of being tethered to a partner or worse, a family. He didn't know what category Naruto fell under but he believed that the blonde, like most other ninjas, himself included, felt that it was better to stay single. The fact that he was even willing to start something with the Amazon showed how much he liked her. Kara seems to be for it though, he continued, but I think it's more about her liking women too. She's been making quite a lot of horny remarks about Diana lately. Tsunade looked at the Kryptonian who seemed to be trying to get some point across using gestures. And she's trying to get them both. Looks like it. Kakashi chuckled. A clever ploy if I do say so myself. I doubt Naruto has any qualms about seeing two women. Tsunade shook her head. I wouldn't really call Kara a woman, she's the same age as him. Physically, Kakashi stressed. Chronologically, she's easily twice his age. She did say she was a teenager when Clark was born. Tsunade rubbed her forehead. Don't use semantics on me, Kakashi. Kakashi waved her off. You already know I will. How else would I keep you on your toes? Something other than trying to confuse me all the time, maybe? You know I hate wordplay. Kakashi merely smiled again before looking back at the trio. Looks like they're delaying it once more. It would be off if they managed to convince her with one conversation, Tsunade replied. I have a feeling we'll be seeing this a lot now. I hope not. I missed out on Oliver's pre-chapter buffoonery because of them, Kakashi complained. You didn't have to listen. I didn't, he agreed, but I did, and I'll continue to. Tsunade scoffed, but didn't reply. She'd given up on trying to understand him. Soon enough, everyone gathered and got settled for the next chapter. So who's reading this one? Hal asked. As if on cue, the book flew over to Jean's hand. The Martian sighed, but flipped it open without speaking. Now that I think of it, does anyone find it strange how Lobo showed up after Superman gave that guy a lobotomy? Oliver asked. Am I the only who feels like it was some sort of summoning ritual? With the number of lobotomies that have been carried out throughout history, Lobo would have become the Bloody Mary of the surgical field by now, Dinah replied. Naruto squinted. I don't get it, why would you guys lobotomize people so often? Because they thought it cured mental problems, it didn't, Bruce said. What they didn't know was that most of the insanity that affected people had nothing to do with the brain itself. You'd know all about mental issues, given you fight the mentally ill all the time. Hal took a shot at him. Bruce bit back a sigh. He knew it was a bad idea to tell the League members that most of his enemies wound up in an asylum. I fight the criminally insane, Hal. It's different. Hal. Can you not do this? Clark came in between them. And the people Bruce fights are dangerous, you've seen them yourself. Yeah. So what if the Gotham rogues have a few dozen screws loose? They still kill a shit ton of people, Oliver agreed. Look at the Joker. I'm pretty sure his mind's long gone but he still kills by the hundreds. If it were me, I'd have put an arrow in his brain the first chance I got. Guy gives me the creeps. That sidekick of his is kind of hot though, Barry had to admit. Even Dinah couldn't disagree. Harleen Quinzel or as she was now called, Harley Quinn, was really good looking. It was a shame she was now nearly as bad as the man who'd made her the way she currently was. Too bad she's fucking crazy. Oliver shook his head. She's the one who did a drive-by with an RPG in Gotham last year. Kara blinked. Wait, that was her? That's one of the mildest things I've seen her do, Bruce remarked, seemingly lost in an unpleasant memory. She's done worse than that. A lot worse. Everyone went quiet for a moment and Jun took that as his cue to read. The screen came down and lit up as he spoke. Cha, has in, Oliver shrunk under Jean's look. Sorry, sorry, go on. The Martian waited for someone else to speak and upon getting nothing but silence, he continued. Chapter 17 Departure A bike burst through one of the windows of the watchtower's control room and a terrible suction force came from the vacuum of space. Alarms rang loudly but fortunately, 
Right after the window was shattered, a blast window lowered itself from the wall and covered the broken window, stopping the suction from outside. He wouldn't be Lobo if he didn't announce his presence by causing property damage in his wake, Oliver said. Doesn't that sound a bit familiar to you? Tsunade looked at Naruto who shook his head. Pervy Sage didn't break windows, he just liked coming in through them. Superman was the first to react and he flew to the newcomer in anger. What's the meaning of this, Lobo? You made me a promise that you'll never come to Earth and cause trouble for me or anyone else living here. You really don't like this guy, huh? Naruto asked. You thought Constantine was bad. Nothing good happens when Lobo's around. He's a nightmare to fight and even when he's helping you, he's doing more harm than good. Clark complained. He's a Zarnian, man. I'm not being racist but they're one of those people the universe is actually better off without, Hal said. They were a set of unruly people. No, I'm pretty sure you are, Oliver chuckled. The racism is insane. The gray-skinned muscular alien wearing a biker outfit was none other than Lobo, the last Zarnian. Don't get your panties in a bunch, Boy Scout. I didn't come to Earth, we're still in space. And I didn't come to cause trouble, I'm here for a delivery. See, the main man keeps his word. As he said that, he pulled on the chain wrapped around his forearm and a large metallic box was yanked forth and slammed on the floor. The box was metallic and large enough for a human to fit in but its walls were red, heated up almost to the point of melting. Superman felt the beginning of a headache. The Zarnian was a pain to deal with. What delivery? For whom? Green Lantern asked. Is it for who or for whom? Clark rubbed his chin. Best not to stress too much about it, man. Oliver told the Kryptonian. The English language is a melting pot of stolen words, dozens of rules and improvisation. Only way you can get everything right is if you study it. Honestly. I remember when I was still learning it and my teacher kept telling me C and C are pronounced the same way but have different meanings. How could I tell the difference when it's said, not written? Kara asked. The letter G is pronounced like AJ, but going isn't pronounced as joing while gentle is pronounced as gent L and gently is pronounced as gently even though the letter Y sounds like, Y, and the former doesn't even sound like the E should belong there, Dinah shrugged. Like Oliver said, don't think too much about it or you'll get a headache. Barry nodded. It's true. Lots of people don't even know the word lasers an acronym. Thank the gods for omnilingualism, Diana said. Crisis of faith aside, she was glad she didn't have to learn every new language from scratch. I wish I had that, Kara lamented. Barry's words only registered a moment later. Wait, lasers an acronym? Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, Bruce said. Yeah, I'm done. Kara shook her head. I can speak it and that's enough for me. Not for you, green dork. Don't pipe up. Green Lantern was already itching for a fight. Lobo's provocation was just the perfect excuse for him to let out some of the inner anger he accumulated from Hawk Girl's apparent indifference when she left earlier that day. But Superman raised an arm and stopped him from starting a fight that they could not easily finish. He understood that the Zarnian did not come looking for trouble and that he technically had not broken his promise either. I understand that he's still hurting but still, it's got to be a hell of a temper on him to get set off that easily, Naruto commented. Clark chuckled. He and Hawk Girl are meant for each other. They'd probably turn their house into a fight club if they ever got married, Kara joked. You want me to take out the trash today? How about you say that to me in the ring? Props to you for stopping him though, Clark. You probably saved his life too. Hal frowned. Lobo's a bit of a pro now when it comes to fighting lanterns. He's murdered a handful of green lanterns and a bunch of other core too. So you can't beat him? Barry asked. I probably could, Hal said. But even then, he's a bitch and a half to take down and seeing as he's still kicking around even though he's been executed more times than I have fingers and toes, it's safe to say he's immortal too. Or he has an extremely powerful healing factor, Bruce added. He might as well be immortal if he can survive getting atomized, Bruce, Hal folded his arms. Point is, even if John can take him on, he'd probably run out of juice long before he could take him out. At that moment, a masked blonde man carrying a fox cub on his shoulder came through the doors of the control room. Sorry guys, the delivery is for me. The previously curled up and sleeping fox cub opened his eyes and his bloodlust flooded the room. Jumping off from Naruto's shoulder, in a mere second he became so large that the three-story tall control room could barely contain his size. Where is the rat? Oh, it's Rui Nak. Kara blinked. Well shit. Lobo brought that rat to the watchtower. Clark grimaced, already fearing what the blonde and partner would do in their presence. I signed up for the league to help people and stop crime. Not star as a live audience to live leaks worthy clips. Barry sighed. He hadn't forgotten the chapter with Vandal Savage. His voice sounded demonic, filled with killing intent. 
What is going on? Naruto, control your fox or he might wreck the whole watchtower if he starts to fight, Batman said urgently. Naruto told Kayubi. Don't kill the rat right away, Kurama. I want to hear the bastard say it. I want to ask him what made him betray me after more than 20 years of working together. What gave him the courage to backstab me? He was crazy for money but not crazy enough to forfeit his life for it. He should have known that this is how it was going to end the moment he tried to get me killed. He gambled away his own family, Diana reminded Naruto. That's clearly a man who values money above everything else. Usually not above their lives, Kakashi cut in. In fact, those kind of people would drop every bit of money they have if it means getting to live another hour. So our guy here's an exception. Oliver pointed at the screen with a thumb. Probably. I doubt it though. He probably just believed the scions would succeed and didn't bother considering what would happen if they didn't. He spoke calmly but the cold fury in his voice made even Lobo unwittingly take a step back in wariness. The current Naruto was no longer like his teenage self, someone that would just brush over people when they betrayed him or when they tried to kill him. I don't know what's going on, but you're not going to kill anyone under my eyes, not as long as we are here. Superman stepped forth and said. Naruto smiled. You tried to stop me once and it didn't work. What makes you think you'll have more luck this time? You're still recovering for one, Clark said. And we know more about you than we did before. We'll be able to stop you this time. Yeah, Naruto nodded, but his skeptical look didn't fade. Keep telling yourself that. All of a sudden, four shadow clones appeared next to Naruto. In the split of a second, the clones performed a short sequence of hand seals and a gale of wind burst from their mouths simultaneously. It was a wind release technique named, Great Breakthrough. But he was not in the mood for making cool poses and shouting names of jutsu. I know it's been addressed before but it took you long enough to break that habit. Kakashi commended. Naruto glared at him. I'm not that bad, I've never explained my own techniques just because I thought the outcome of the battle was already decided. Kakashi hummed. Hmm, that's true. From the moment the clones were summoned to the moment they cast the wind technique, barely one second passed. The seven members of the Justice League were unexpectedly pushed back by the gales of wind and thrown to the opposite side of the control room. But none of them was hurt because he had never intended to hurt them in the first place, he only wanted to push them to the side. Naruto sucked his lips to keep from laughing. I'm sorry, what was that about being able to stop me now? Clark sighed. In the next second, the four clones rushed out and formed a square shape with Naruto, Kayubi, and Lobo at its center. The four of them brought their hands together like in a prayer and then crossed their fingers. Instantly, bright purple walls of light rose from behind them from the floor until they reached the tall ceiling of the control room and encapsulated them together with their original body, Kayubi, and Lobo in a cubic formation of light. Oh, this. Naruto looked sour. Kara felt the same. The manga didn't do much in terms of coloring but she easily recognized the barrier that had been up around the third Hokage. What is that? Some sort of barrier or something? Barry asked. The four corners violet seal formation. It does make a barrier but with the added bonus of burning anyone who touches it to a crisp. Kakashi explained. It's pretty much unpassable but it needs four people to keep up at all times so if you can somehow kill, he rolled his eyes at the hero's looks, incapacitate at least one of them, it goes down. Right, you think I could phase through it? Barry asked and vibrated his hand to prove his point. Probably, Naruto replied. But the sealing arts, even when done as ninjutsu, are basically a giant middle finger to the physical rules so I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Like magic. Bruce stared at the barrier. Perhaps Nth Metal would be able to bypass it. Unnerved by the sudden development, Lobo took a massive crowbar from his bike and narrowed his eyes. Don't worry. This is just a barrier to prevent the Justice League from annoying me like before. Naruto said to dispel the Zarnian's worries and then turned his head towards the Justice League who were just then standing up from the floor where the gales of wind had thrown them. He told them. This is the Four Corners Violet Field Formation, a barrier. Unlike other barrier spells, not only that it protects the things inside it, everything that touches it will be set aflame. For your own good, don't attack it. Unconvinced by Naruto's warning, Superman flew at him and punched the violet wall of light. The barrier trembled heavily under his powerful strike but the Kryptonian also let out a startled cry of pain when his arm was engulfed by flames. If it was regular fire, he would not bat an eye, he could even withstand the flames of the sun. Mystic energies, however, were a different thing altogether. A breath of ice blew from his mouth and his arm quickly became encased in a block of ice, snuffing out the fire before it could cause serious damage. Everyone looked at Clark who flushed ashamedly. At least now we know he's not bluffing, 
the man of steel tried to offer a silver lining. Kakashi stared at the man disbelievingly. I've seen impulsiveness but that is just unbelievable. Unbelievably stupid, Tsunade added. You're lucky you have ice breath and you're a tank, even to magic and chakra or it would be more than your arm that caught on fire. Naruto shook his head. You should have known by now that he doesn't bluff, Clark, Diana reprimanded him. Imagine surviving an invasion, the death of your planet and hundreds of evil plots designed specifically to kill you only to end up dying just because you wanted to see if a guy was serious or not, Kara said. The last son of Krypton. Dead because he couldn't take a seasoned killer's word seriously. Yeah man, that was pretty dumb. Couldn't you have tossed a pen at it first or something? Barry asked. You could have had me throw a batarang at it if you wanted to verify, Bruce agreed. Imagine if it had guaranteed an instant death. I get it, I get it, Clark sighed. He just wanted to keep the mercenary from killing someone. Was it so wrong? Don't be careless, guys, this is a magic spell. Superman warned. Yeah you don't say. The hypocrisy of the man's words made Naruto and Kara laugh. Clark hung his head. Wonder Woman could not help asking. Why are you so eager to attack them? Momentarily, the other members of the Justice League stared at her blankly. It's almost like you can't even comprehend the thought of not fighting them. Kakashi shook his head disapprovingly. Did you not learn anything from what happened with Starfire? It doesn't mean we should just stand by and let him commit a murder, Clark defended his team. He's neither a citizen nor is the rat. Neither of them fall under your jurisdiction and by that right, it's none of your business what happens. Kakashi pointed out. Except that Naruto was granted asylum on Earth, even if in the Watchtower, Bruce said. As such, he's required to follow our rules until he leaves. Ah, I see. Kakashi smiled at Naruto. What do you know, you're the asshole this time. Neither Lobo, nor Naruto, nor Kurama are from Earth and the one who Lobo captured is not from Earth either. You're making the same mistake you made when he came for the Tamaranian girl, picking up a fight with him for no reason. He doesn't want to fight us, look, he even cast a barrier spell to keep us from interfering. Superman clenched his hands into fists and the block of ice encasing in his right arm shattered under his strength. He understood Wonder Woman's reasoning and he logically agreed with what she said but on the other side, the idea of seeing someone get executed under his very eyes revolted him. That's how I felt about Rogber too. Oliver nodded. He's storm cloak filth, Barry said. Imperials beta. You want us to just sit and watch how he kills someone? What if he's innocent? Flash said. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Naruto told me about him. His name is Rui Nak. That man used to be his information broker for years, they were partners. But Rui Nak betrayed him, sending him right into the Scion's trap who wanted to capture and dissect him. That's what led to the Scion's annihilation a few weeks ago. Wonder Woman explained. Look at that, you two are sharing. Kara grinned at Diana who rolled her eyes. Naruto subtly motioned. No, with his hands. Too soon. The rest of the Justice League stopped charging at the barrier when they heard her explanation. While they were talking amongst themselves, Lobo dragged the large metallic box in front of Naruto and used the crowbar in his other hand to pry it open. An acrid, stomach-churning smell suddenly filled the entire room and it made everyone in the Justice League cover their noses with their hands. Naruto was wearing his mask which filtered any unwelcome, harmful smells or gases so he was not affected but Kyubi growled. Ah, I see. Kakashi nodded. I understand now. Lobo burned him. How do you know? Oliver asked. The box is hot, Kakashi pointed at the box in question. And I've burned a lot of people. A lot of the smell comes from the roasting fat, vaporizing blood and muscle. It gets really bad when the person happens to be holding in poop too. In fact, we don't need to know. Dinah quickly stopped the man before he could continue. It smells like burnt flesh. What did you do to him? The large fox's demonic voice rang. He's been crying like a scared school girl in my ears for hours, begging me to release him. He kinda got on my nerves so I roasted his ass a little with my engines. But I guess I cooked the rat. Ahahaha, Lobo said and laughed boisterously. See? He never does anything right, Clark said. You're lucky he didn't somehow get you flagged down for kidnapping. Naruto palmed his forehead through the mask. You imbecile, you were supposed to bring him alive. What did you even bring him here for anymore? Seriously, you might as well just dispose of him and tell me you killed him already, Naruto complained. I agree, it's not as satisfying to see the corpse of an enemy you didn't kill yourself, Kakashi said. That's, not what I meant. Lobo came and put an arm around Naruto's shoulder as if they were drinking buddies in a bar. Ah come on, Goldilocks, don't be like that. 
You were gonna bust his head anyway so what's the big deal? Look at the good part. Your fox gets to eat freshly grilled rat barbecue. Naruto took Lobo's arm from around his shoulders and twisted it in annoyance, making Lobo cry out. Ow, ow, let go. What's your problem, man? Watch your mouth when you talk about Kurama, Naruto said dangerously and kicked the Zarnian away from him, making him crash against the floor onto his face. And just so you know, this doesn't count as you repaying my favor. Lobo groaned but otherwise looked unscathed. When he heard that his debts were not cleared out, however, he bristled. Hey, don't think you can swindle the main man. I searched for this rat for weeks and then chased after him through three planetary systems before I finally caught him. He was a slippery one. In my books, I've more than repaid you what I owed. At least he didn't just start attacking you, Lobo doesn't take kindly to feeling swindled. Hal commented. Naruto nodded slowly. He probably knows he fucked up too, he just doesn't want to admit it. Naruto let a drawn out sigh. Greatest bounty hunter my ass, he muttered under his breath. Why did I have any expectations from him anyway? My fault for trusting an idiot. Truly, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Lobo grinned from one ear to another when he saw Naruto not contradicting him, conveniently choosing to ignore the rest of the things he said. I knew we'd see eye to eye. If you need anything else, you got my number. No more freebies next time though. The main man ain't doing charity no more. With that, Lobo hopped on his space hog and, after Naruto's clones cancelled the barrier technique, he burst through another window, causing mayhem once more as the vacuum of space started to suck out everything from the room. Fortunately, another blast window came down from the wall and replaced the other broken glass. Definitely like Jiraiya, Tsunade said. He didn't like to go out through the same window he came in through either. Bruce looked like he was physically in pain. As always, the cost of repairing the windows would come out of his wallet alone. Jesus Christ! Green Lantern exclaimed when he came closer and saw the still hot and smoking half-melted corpse of the humanoid rat. A minute. Barry blurred away and a second later, the people with superhuman hearing picked up the sound of retching and liquid splashing. The speedster seemed to have reached his limit. Not that they could blame him. The only people who didn't look affected by the sight were the ninjas and Bruce. Even Oliver looked away with a heavy sigh. Diana took a few heavy breaths, as if fighting nausea and Kara covered her mouth, horrified by the grisly sight. After a minute, Barry reappeared on his seat, sorry about that. It's fine. Naruto gave him a concerned look, are you alright? I'll be fine, the man avoided looking at the screen, can you let me know when something else comes up? Sure. I think I'm going to be sick. Flash said and right in the next moment, he bent down and emptied the contents of his stomach. It's changed. Naruto told Barry who looked back up, relieved. What should we do with this? Wonder Woman asked forcing back the bile rising in her throat. It was her first time as well that she was seeing someone who died so terribly. Maybe your fox can eat it. Pretty sure he's eaten far worse things before. Superman said without thinking but a massive tail suddenly slammed into his face, sending him crashing through several walls towards the interior of the watchtower. No, everyone jumped as Kurama's voice came out through Naruto's mouth. Looks like even he doesn't take kindly to that, Dinah remarked. She placed a hand on her chest in an attempt to calm her racing heart. How about you eat a donkey dick you piece of shit? What do you think I am? Your garbage dumpster, Kayubi shouted. The fox was already angry at Lobo for not bringing Rui Nak alive. He had wanted to torture the rat to the death and hear him scream in agony but he was robbed of that pleasure. Superman disrespecting him like that was the last drop that spilt the glass. When he saw the others readying themselves for a fight Naruto said. In all the fairness, that was a dick move from Superman, he had it coming. He eats flesh. Rui Nak is, was flesh. Clark cried, what's wrong with what I said? Naruto pointed at the half-melted mess of muscle, cloth and fur at the edge of the screen. It's not only about what you want him to eat, it's why you want him to eat it. He's not a cockroach, he can't just eat anything and he's sure as hell not your organic waste. If I handed you a piece of half-chewed meat and told you to eat it because I can't swallow it and there's nothing to throw it in, would you eat it? You eat meat, don't you? Oh, Clark looked ashamed. I didn't think of it that way. Well do and you better stop thinking of Kurama as my pet because he's not. Your fox attacked Superman just because of a few words. Green Lantern rebuked, his power ring glowing with a green light. How about I take a shit on the floor now and tell you in all seriousness to eat it? Are you okay with that? Naruto bit back, or maybe just because he looks like a fox he's less than a human. You're a green lantern, you of all people here should not discriminate. 
you should know that humans are just a fraction of sentient living beings when you take the universe at large. That's different. Green Lantern tried to argue and his power ring glowed brighter. He looked ready to shoot a blast of light at any moment. Shut up. Naruto said in a demonic voice no different than that of the enormous fox standing next to him. Green Lantern froze. A terrifying killing intent assaulted his senses and the green light flickering around his power ring was extinguished. Someone with a willpower as formidable as him should not lose his marbles just from someone's murderous spirit but, for some reason, his entire body became paralyzed. What he did not know was that it was not only killing intent that paralyzed him but the technique that Naruto cast in conjunction with it. It was a jutsu used frequently by the elite shinobi back in his homeworld, the Anbu, to capture their targets when they needed them alive, Kanashibari no jutsu. A fearsome combination, Kakashi remarked. Kara looked at Naruto. What's that Kanashri? Dot con. Kanashibari no jutsu, Naruto corrected her. It's used to temporarily paralyze by locking the locomotion muscles in the target's body in place to keep them from moving. I can't really explain it without a demonstration. Air, maybe later. Kayubi reverted to his tiny form as a fox cub and blew out a sigh. Let it go, Naruto. I'm not angry anymore. The fox knew that he was the blonde's, Achilles' heel. Naruto always got worked up and tended to go overboard when someone treated Kayubi like a mindless animal. The fox stopped him before someone from the Justice League said another stupid thing and aggravated him even more. They did not have a spaceship anymore to leave as they pleased and he was not in the mood to fight again against all of them either. It's pretty cool that you two are so tight, Kara remarked. Naruto looked at her. We've been together for the better part of a century, it'd be odd if we weren't. Asterism, how do we always end up fighting with them? Flash muttered after Naruto and Kayubi left the control room. He really can't stomach us, does he? That creature may look like a fox from Earth, but he's not an animal. He is someone with a personality and intelligence just like the rest of us. It's not that Uzumaki Naruto doesn't stomach us but that the fox is like family to him and someone insulted him. Martian Manhunter said, what Superman said was very rude. Can you tell him I'm sorry? Clark asked Naruto. Once again, Naruto was forced to listen to Kurama let out a stream of expletives in response to the Kryptonian. When the fox's tirade ended, he looked at the man. He said he'll think about it. I guess it was my mistake but that was quite the overreaction, Superman said while dusting off his suit. There was not even a scratch on him. I didn't think the fox would be so proud and react like that. Batman suddenly called out Wonder Woman who was trying to slip away from the room unnoticed. Wonder Woman, where are you going? Nothing escapes you, does it, Bruce? Diana looked at the man in question wearily. Bruce merely smirked. He'd been sneaking around for years, it would be an insult if any of them managed to get past him. I'm going to check up on those two and keep an eye on them. Someone has to make sure they don't do something crazy. She said and before Batman could add anything, she flew out of the room. When the Amazon princess left, the five men looked at each other and then at the metallic box with the still warm, half-melted corpse of a humanoid rat in it. Realizing why the princess had scurried away so quickly, Batman said what was on everyone's mind at that moment. We were duped. Diana looked proud of herself for successfully avoiding having to clean up the mess. I think it's more of her wanting to check up on her boyfriend, Kara grinned. Someone has to comfort him after that little episode. Superman said in exasperation, keeping an eye on them, she left only so she wouldn't have to deal with the corpse, didn't she? Athena's wisdom, indeed. Asterism having successfully escaped from dealing with the disgusting remains of Rui Nak, Wonder Woman almost broke into a smile when she arrived in front of Naruto's room. She was about to knock on the door but she stopped when she heard a conversation coming from inside. 0. .500 mass units of Delustal for a clunker. The hell, why don't you just rob me already? Naruto's voice came from behind the door. That's highway robbery, Hal cried. I'm guessing 500 Delustal units is a lot, Naruto asked. Not really, but for a ship like a clunker, it's way too much. What's a clunker though? Kakashi asked. A class of spaceship, Hal replied. So he wants to leave, Diana said. She wasn't sure what her other self felt for the blonde, but she imagined she'd be disappointed at having a friend leave so soon. Ma, Ma, don't be so quick to anger, Mr. Uzumaki. You've been in the business for so long, you should know how the supply and demand rule works. Certainly, in ordinary conditions, this ship would be a bit cheaper but when you consider the fact that it's on such short notice, you know, the price is bound to increase. An oily voice could be heard from what Wonder Woman assumed it was Naruto's communication device. The dude sounds like a professional swindler, Barry commented. That's the same voice you'd hear from one of those shady pawn shop owners in movies who sell you an old watch for 20 grand. 
It sounded like the voice of a merchant. The Amazon princess could automatically understand and speak any language because of Athena's blessing but she could also discern that the language spoken by the merchant was not from Earth. It was alien. You call that? A bit cheaper. 500 mass units of Delustal are worth three to four times more than that dreg you call spaceship. As I said, on such short notice, I doubt anyone can just willy-nilly give you a better offer. If you think about it, the price isn't that unreasonable. Of course, I do have much better options available too but the price for those will increase accordingly. Of course. Naruto sighed, it wouldn't be business if you couldn't take advantage of someone desperate. That's how it goes, Oliver nodded. No thank you. I'll buy it from someone else. Good luck with scamming other people. Naruto said flatly. Wait, wait. How about 450? No. 400 mass units then. This is the lowest. Oh how the turntables. Hal chuckled. Dodged a bullet there, man. I can bet my ring that the ship had more problems than a third world country at war. Jesus, man. Oliver stared at the man incredulously. The transmission was interrupted and silence instilled in the room. Don't wait outside, Diana, come in. Naruto called, startling her a little. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Wonder Woman said when she entered his room. Yes. Naruto gave Diana an unimpressed look. Yes you did. Diana gave him a pointed look. I didn't go looking to eavesdrop on you, did I? It was a small room that they had transformed into a bedroom for Naruto to live in while he recovered. It was not large but it had a bed, a desk and a wardrobe too, not that he had ever used the wardrobe. It's okay, there was no secret. She came behind him at the desk he was sitting. A faint but sweet fragrance entered his nostrils when she bent down over his shoulder to see what he was doing on his tablet. She vobbed. Kara chuckled. Clark blinked. She, what? Most of the others looked confused but Dinah slapped a hand over Oliver's mouth to muffle his laugh. Never mind, she said. Don't worry about it. You're looking for a spaceship? She asked when she saw several dozens of spaceship models with various prices below their pictures and lists of specifications for each of them. Currently, Naruto was browsing a black market intergalactic portal. One could find there anything, from weapons and warships to robots, living slaves and even viruses. As long as one had the materials that the seller was willing to barter their goods for, anything could be purchased. Why the black market? Are you wanted or something? Clark asked. Yes. Naruto and Hal said at the same time. Almarak, remember? Oh, yeah, your ride or die has her eyes on a new man. Oliver teased him. I know it hurts but you'll find someone else. I have someone else. Clark stared at him flatly. Why do you guys keep acting like me and Lois aren't together? Yes, I've recovered completely by now, he said. Ah, you're leaving already? She asked. He turned his chair around to look at her. You sound, disappointed. He was not wearing his mask at that moment but Diana did not avoid his eyes. I am, she admitted, much to his surprise. I enjoyed your company, especially over the past week. Oh, Dinah got off her seat excitedly. It's happening. It's finally happening. That's what Lenithaplug said. Oliver snickered, effectively killing his girlfriend's excitement. The woman responded by punching him in the arm. Ow. He sat up from his chair but by doing so, he realized that they were standing too close to each other when they were both on their feet. It was the same for me too, Naruto said, his eyes never leaving hers. Standing that close face to face with a man that she felt conscious of was a new experience for the Amazon princess. She had danced with Bruce Wayne before but his indifference had prevented the apparition of a connection between them. What she was experiencing in the present was different from anything she had been through before. The intensity of those red eyes boring into her soul brought her a funny feeling in her stomach and although they were not touching, she could feel on the skin that her armor left exposed the warmth radiating from his body. Not doing it consciously, the tip of her tongue stuck out and wet her lips, her glistening saliva making them redder and more alluring than before. Naruto's eyes were involuntarily drawn to the motion and his blood surged to his face at the erotic sight of her moistening her lips. Her action suddenly made him aware of his own dry lips and he could not help following her example and wetting his lips with his tongue too. Similarly, her eyes were drawn to his lips as well and when their eyes locked again, a healthy flush lighted both their faces. For the first time since they'd arrived, Diana saw Naruto go beat red. I don't believe it. You lay with three women frequently, you make and receive crude humor and you use every curse word under the sun but you see us about to kiss and that's where you decide you can't take any more? You're not doing any better. Naruto pointed at her own flushed face, and I can't help it, the mushy stuff gets to me, he trailed off towards the end. The Amazon couldn't refute that. She'd purposely covered the lower side of her face and tried not to look at anything aside from the screen in the blonde. 
In spite of herself, she couldn't help feeling a bit of envy for her counterpart, she wanted to kiss someone too. The sound of swallowing came from Naruto when Diana almost imperceptibly came an inch closer and said in a whisper, Do you really have to leave? I would love to have the chance to know you better. The charm of her innocent yet devilish sensuality lit a fire in him. His mind was cloudy and he felt dizzy as if he was drunk. Kara squinted. Are you, trying to have sex with him? Diana sputtered. What? No, of course not, I would never do that so quickly. I don't know, D, Dinah puffed her cheeks. You're sounding awfully sultry right now. That's not the tone you use with a guy you're about to ask to be your boyfriend. I am not sleeping with someone I'm not even in a relationship with. Diana glared at her. Steve was the closest thing she'd ever had to a lover and even with him she hadn't done more than kiss him, much less let him in between her legs. They're obviously trying to get a rise out of you, Diana, calm down. Naruto patted her arm and frowned. Are you alright? You're getting hot. I'm fine, she huffed. Your friends don't like me, he said with the last bit of rationality he possessed, also in a whisper. But I do. I like you. Diana confessed and stepped even closer, their faces inches away, their noses almost touching. His heart shook and skipped several beats, it was as though time stopped for him at that moment. He could feel her warm breath on his lips. It tasted sweet. It made him thirsty. He craved more. If only her breath was like that then how would those ripe and inviting red lips taste like? His red eyes found her blue eyes once more. So close they were that he could see his stunned reflection in her enlarged pupils and the needy expression he wore on his face. You know, Oliver went quiet when he saw Dinah's glare. He wanted to kiss her so badly. He wanted nothing more than to feast on those luscious lips and squeeze her sinful body in his arms. What's stopping you from doing just that? A voice in his mind asked. Indeed, what was stopping him? Nothing. Reaching that conclusion, time started flowing again. With one more look at her eyes, his mouth descended onto hers like lightning. For the split of a second, their first contact numbed them. But then, pleasure flooded their senses and they moaned in each other's mouth. Though it lasted for a short time, the intensity of the kiss left them breathless. Both their faces were flushed with infatuation and the tension between them was almost palpable. This time, it was Diana who took the initiative. She brought her arms around his neck and pushed the back of his head with her hands, bringing his face closer to her. Their lips mashed against each other once more and their noses rubbed against each other with the same passion as their mouths. His strong arms wrapped around her thin waist, closing the gap between their bodies. Her voluptuous breasts were squashed against his hard chest and the feeling of his bulge pressing against her core made her raise one of her long legs and wrap it around his waist, in an effort to press herself against him harder. She gasped in their kiss when one of his hands left the small of her back and trailed down her buttocks, his fingers greedily fondling the elastic and meaty flesh before they trailed further below to grab on the thick and muscular thigh that rose to embrace his waist. This time, it was Jun who stopped. Everything good, man? Barry asked. I am, fine. The Martian replied. It, I am not comfortable with reading this. Nobody here is comfortable with hearing it either. Clark sighed. I just tuned out everything up until you stopped. Me too. Barry nodded. We're all just hoping for this to end. Except maybe those two. He pointed at Naruto and Diana who looked to be having their own separate conversation, the sight on the screen forgotten by the two. Not me. Kara shook her head. I'm leaning a lot from this. Sure you are. Clark's tone was resigned. He could not get enough of her. Her kiss tasted like nectar and her body evoked a flame in him that he had never felt before. She could not get enough of him. The warmth and the mysterious energy seeping out of his body aroused a passion inside her that she could not control. Like a moth drawn to a flame, she approached his flame fully knowing that her passion might consume her but willing to pay the price nonetheless. Not content with only tasting his lips, her tongue sneaked through his lips into his mouth, to meet his tongue. She had fooled around with some of her Amazon sisters a few times before, she was no stranger to kissing. Her experienced tongue wrapped around his tongue sensually and then coaxed it to enter her mouth, proceeding to suck on it greedily. She drank his saliva, massaged his lips with hers and sucked on his tongue and he surrendered to her fully, letting her dominate his eager and inexperienced mouth. They got drunk from each other's fluids and they used their whole bodies to express their hunger, they need for each other. Repeatedly, they had to part gasping for air but they dived back every time with even more passion and hunger than before. They lost track of time, sunken in their world of passion and pleasure, but as all good things can't last forever, their heaven was broken apart too when a very loud beeping sound came from his communication pad announcing an incoming transmission. As if woken from a trance, as if a spell was broken, they parted once more but this time without rejoining. In the silence of the room, 
The beeping sounded even louder than usual but Naruto could still not let go of her, his eyes looking at her as if he wanted to burn that image in his mind for eternity. The disheveled form of her long and silky black hair, her glistening with lust blue eyes, the rosiness in her unblemished cheeks and the erotic gasps for air and silent moans coming through those deep red and plush lips, inflated from the loving abuse he had delivered on them. How can someone this beautiful exist? He exclaimed in awe as he cupped her face in his rough palms and caressed her cheeks with as much tenderness his calloused fingers were capable of. He closed his eyes and pressed his forehead against hers. I don't know what came over us but I don't want it to end. Diana leaned into his touch and her eyes closed in bliss too. I've never felt anything like this before, she uttered in wonder. Don't leave, no way I'm letting you go after this. Other you might leave, but you're still here, Kara pointed at Naruto who only smiled a tad ruefully. Tentatively, Naruto said, if the book was over and they all got sent back to their respective worlds, finding Earth, much less the one with Diana in it, would be like finding a needle in a haystack now that he knew about the existence of an infinite number of universes. It was why he was content with going at the woman's pace, he had no idea how far they could go, but he'd take what he could get. She leaned her face in and she pressed her lips against his once more, taking his breath with a passionate kiss. The beeping coming from his communication pad stopped and the two of them continued to embrace each other in silence for a long time. Come with me, Diana. He said again, his hand now tenderly caressing her hair while she rested her chin on his shoulder, her head leaning against his. The Justice League can't control me and they are afraid of what they can't control. I can't live here, like a caged beast, under their scrutiny 24-7. I can't trade off my freedom. The mercenary's words brought everyone's attention back to the story. She's not really going to leave, right? Barry laughed nervously. I mean, I get that she likes him but, come on. Everything I and perhaps my other self as well, has is on earth, Diana looked conflicted. If she's like me, she wouldn't. And knowing me, I won't stay either. Naruto sighed. The majority of his life had been spent living for others and now that he was free of both bond and duty, he wouldn't give it up for any reason. She raised her face from his shoulder and looked at him with pleading eyes. I can't leave the earth. My mother, my sisters are here. My friends are here too. Stay with me, Naruto. I'm sure they will grow to accept you in time. Love is compromise, Kakashi heard Tsunade whisper to herself beside him. He didn't ask what she meant. Naruto placed a kiss on her forehead and sighed deeply before breaking their hug. Diana's beautiful face became downcast and her eyes wet. She understood his answer from his actions. He took a scroll out of his chest pocket and after pressing his palm on it, another communication pad appeared in a small plume of smoke. I would have been willing to make Earth my new home but the Justice League and I don't mix. We are like oil and water. Even so, that doesn't mean we can't see each other and continue to keep in touch. He said and handed her the communication pad. Take this, it's a light wave communication device. It ignores the space-time laws and we can talk to each other in real time no matter where I am in the universe. All major powers use this technology to communicate. It was produced by the gods of New Genesis. As for how it works, I have no idea. There comes a point where the lines between science and magic become very blurred. As far as I know, this technology could be very well considered magic. Though the prospect of not being able to stay together was paining her, she smiled briefly at his words. She understood that they lived in different worlds. He was like the bird freely soaring the skies, traveling the universe, while the Justice League were like a frog trapped at the bottom of the well. They were too different, they could never see eye to eye. But there may still be a chance. Diana said to herself, once the Justice League becomes stronger and they will no longer depend on my strength, I could join him. The heroes frowned at that. They didn't want Diana to leave, she was one of them. At the moment, she could not leave. The people of Earth needed her strength. But they still had a chance because they were both immortal. Time was not their enemy like it was for regular people. Only their feelings mattered. I want to come with you. I will come with you. Dot but not now. Maybe in a few years. Will you wait for me? Diana asked. Yes. Naruto said unhesitatingly, it's not you, Diana said, but couldn't keep the flustered smile off her face. If you asked the same, my answer wouldn't change, he said. Naruto said categorically, definitely, a smile of relief flashed on her face. Are you going to take Starfire with you too? Diana asked out of the blue. Starfire, huh? He said rhetorically. After Coriander became friends with Supergirl, she changed her name to Starfire, it meant the same thing, it was just her name translated into English. Lesbians. Oliver whispered. Mark my words, they'll start dating in the future. I like, Kara sighed heavily. All right, I give, I like both. I knew it, Oliver laughed triumphantly. I knew you liked girls. 
gender doesn't matter much to us, we make our kids in pods anyway. Kara shrugged. We just rather the parent genes be from opposing genders to avoid the offspring looking like a malformed abomination that exists solely to defy the will of God, Rao in the universe. That's just a fancy way of saying you don't like the thought of guys poking each other, Hal said. Read a story with an mpreg tag and you'll understand why. I don't see a reason to take her. We're actually not that close, you know? She was just my bounty, someone that I had to rescue and protect. She has also found a place for herself here, hasn't she? Diana nodded and said, Yes, she's been living with Supergirl since almost two weeks ago. She started attending high school together with her and they do small-time hero work together too. They're inseparable. I'm glad to hear that. Poor girl has had a very rough life until now. She deserves all the happiness she can get. Come to think of it, where is Karama? When Diana entered the room, Kayubi had been on Naruto's bed, lazily chewing on some apples. The thought that Kayubi had watched him and Diana swallow each other's tongues for half an hour made his face become as red as the apples on the bed. He'd never met me live that down, Naruto whispered to Diana. He still calls me son after that little joke. Now I wish he saw us. The Amazon laughed softly. The thought of the fox watching them kiss was embarrassing to her too, but she'd seen him rib Naruto over his past incidents. He must have left the room a while ago. Oh my, look at that. You can blush too. How endearing. Diana said and giggled. She cupped his face with her hands to prevent him from looking away. He brought her back into arms and embraced her tightly. Diana hugging him back just a tad tighter in response filled his heart with warmth. No cheating in the meantime, she said and but did not dare to look at him. This time, it was her turn to press her head into his chest and look down for him to not see her embarrassed face. Not like he could even if he wanted to, Hal remarked. Karama scares off the hose. You didn't just say that. Kara gave the lantern an odd look. He's right though, Naruto nodded. Karama might not have any romantic desires but he placed a lot of value on commitment and loyalty. He'd chase off any other woman who came after his other self and chastise him for even considering giving them a chance. Bwah. What cheating? Who would even like someone with a demonic face like mine? He said back flustered. I recall hearing something about the Queen of Almerak wanting your babies. Karama, that bastard. Naruto cussed. Not just that. I saw the doe eyes that Supergirl and Starfire throw at you two every time they come to the watchtower to visit you, she said and glared at him. You haven't even started dating and jealousy is already setting in. Dinah grinned at Diana who looked away. I just want him to know the people to avoid, Diana said defensively. I can't have him letting others get close to him with the same intentions as I do. So that's why you asked if Starfire was coming with me. You were worried? He laughed incredulously. She made the mistake to look up and Naruto saw her face slightly flushed in jealousy, it made him laugh at how adorable she was. So cute, he said with a grin and kissed the top of her head. He knew that if Kayubi could see him right then he would have laughed at his shit-eating grin but he could not help it. A warrior princess over 3000 years old was acting jealous over two teenage girls, she was just too cute. That grin would not leave his face any time soon. If anything, I should be the one to worry that you'll forget about me and go for a more handsome man. Naruto teased. You're plenty handsome yourself. Diana complimented him. Naruto buffed his fingernails smugly. Why thanks, Diana. I make sure to shower Twee. No you don't. Kakashi cut him off. Diana shook her head. Not a chance. While my civilian identity may be rather popular with men, I rarely interact with regular people. I couldn't be with one either. As for who I really am, Wonder Woman, it seems that men don't like me all that much. Naruto looked at her strangely. What's with that look? You're totally clueless, aren't you? Naruto said in wonder. A very interesting idea came to his mind and he smiled in amusement. Come. Let's go to the conference room and access Earth's internet from the computer in there. I want to show you something. Kara grinned. He's about to go introduce you to the experience of seeing porn of yourself. Oh no, Diana paled. Why would you? Naruto shrugged. So you know you're not undesirable. I've got tons of competition for you, you know. An average guy would trade his family for a chance to date you based on your looks alone. Diana flushed once more. But that doesn't mean I want to see pornography of myself. How would you feel if I told you I wanted to show you porn of you? It's a shame, Naruto smiled impishly, because I have none. No internet in my world, remember? Actually, there's an entertainment place in Noodle Country where the people pay to sleep with Taikomochi who dress up and use makeup and wigs to look like you, Tsunade said. This time, it was Naruto who blanched. What? You first got famous there for writing a smut book, Naruto. It can't be helped. Kakashi chuckled at his student's horror. No. 
Talk about a looted couple, Kara remarked. Wait, you wrote smut? Pervy Sage made me, Naruto lamented. Though a bad feeling started creeping in her heart, Wonder Woman followed him there, her hand glued to his the entire time. Asked by Naruto, she took a seat and operated the computer. Go to Google and type in the search bar, Wonder Woman Hentai. Yeah, just like that. Now go to the image section. Diana buried her face in her hands at the hero's laughter when the results came out. The images had been blurred out thankfully but she'd still seen outlines descriptive enough to know what was happening in them. Like I said, all deepfakes, fan art and cosplays, Kara gestured towards the screen. Hey, I think that's you getting a bakaki, D. The Amazon gurgled. I've searched up myself before but I'm glad I've never gone as far as to actually search for porn of myself. Clark shook his head and upon getting no vocal response, he looked at the others. You haven't. I got curious, alright. Hal admitted. It's all just gay porn and shitty Wattpad stories. Dinah sighed. I'm always either getting raped or having sex with someone on my own bike. I haven't, Bruce said. And now that I know what to expect, I never will. The mouse in her hand was suddenly crushed into a ball of plastic and metal. W. What in Athena's name is this? She sputtered in disbelief. I swear on the sticks, I, I never. She could not even find her words, she was shocked. I know it's not you, he reassured her. Then, she began to say agitated. The earthlings seem to have an unwritten rule on their internet. If something exists, there is porn for it. Give it some time and I'm sure even Karama and I will appear drawn in some obscene postures too, soon. It's sad because I know this is true, Oliver remarked. A semi-anthropomorphic fox with man hands. The furries are going to have a field day when the undoubtedly captured footage of him goes mainstream. Barry shrugged. Remember that movie with the genocidal alien? It got hooked onto the internet for five minutes and that was enough time for it to decide humanity needed to go. The internet is both the best and worst thing to happen to us. Dinah shook her head. Naruto had lived in the watchtower for almost one month. With the help of his shadow clones, he had learned the English language to the point where he could understand, speak and even write it without a translating device. He still chose to use his translating device to communicate with the others though because his pronunciation and accent were a bit off, but he had become very familiar with Earth's internet during that time. Oh wow. Look, there is even an image of you in your new costume. You've changed your costume less than a month ago. Perverts really are fast when they put their mind to it, eh? He said half teasingly, half in amazement but the next moment Diana's punch blasted a hole through the computer's monitor. I don't understand anymore. Why are you all so eager to destroy equipment? Now that the mask was off, Bruce had no qualms expressing himself. That monitor cost $6,000. I'll pay you for it, Diana said. Bruce snorted. If he had a dollar for every time he heard that, he'd be a much richer man than he already was. He laughed out loud. Now, now, don't be angry. I just wanted to show you how wrong you were about men not liking you. Now you see. You're one of the most desired women on this planet. They're just scared to show it to your face. Then, he added like it was an afterthought. I gotta say though, I love your new costume much more than the one you had when I came here to capture Vandal Savage one month ago. Her previous anger melted like a miracle and an uncharacteristically shy expression appeared on her face. Do you think so? She asked, secretly feeling giddy inside when she saw how his eyes roamed over her figure. Compared to her previous costume consisting of red boots, blue briefs and a shoulderless red top, her current costume made her look more like the warrior princess that she was. She still had her golden lasso, her silver bracelets of submission and her golden tiara but the rest of her costume was different. A white pair of skorts, a piece of clothing that looked like a skirt from outside but were pants on the inside, replaced her briefs, her red boots were replaced by a pair of knee-high golden greaves, and her red top was replaced with a white top on which a large golden owl motif extended its wings over her breasts, it was goddess Athena's symbol. Her previously bare shoulders were covered by golden pauldrons, she wore two wing-like golden accessories on the sides of her face, and a white cloak covered her back, her neck, and the upper part of her chest. Kara whistled saucily. I like this costume better too. Diana sighed. Kara's words felt so different now that she knew the girl was actually attracted to her. Yes, absolutely. Compared to before, one can tell your royalty just by looking at you. Naruto said and nodded furiously, a testament to how much he appreciated her new costume. Wonder Woman revealed a bashful smile and looked down while playing with a strand of her long hair. Naruto discovered a hard-to-believe fact. Wonder Woman, a warrior princess over 3,000 years old was weak to compliments. Not long after that, the two lovebirds became immersed in their own little world again. Asterism four days after the incident caused by Lobo, another spaceship was detected by the watchtower. It was a small ship, no longer than 100 feet. 
there was only one person aboard, the pilot who came to deliver the ship to Naruto after he had bought it. They need to learn from Amazon, Oliver said. Overworked staff, underpaid workers, no bathroom breaks and same-day delivery. A dream company, Kara nodded. There were not many members of the Justice League present in the watchtower at that moment because Naruto had not told them anything about his plans to leave. Besides Wonder Woman who had spent every single second of the previous four days together with Naruto, the only other member of the Justice League present at the tower was Martian Manhunter. We could have thrown a goodbye party for you, Clark said. After everything? Naruto raised a skeptical brow. I'm pretty sure you'd have laced the food with cyanide. Not caring that the Martian Manhunter could see it, Diana poured her entire heart and soul in the goodbye kiss she shared with Naruto. Remember, whenever you want to talk, call me on my pad, and if there is anything you need my help with, I will drop everything I'm doing at that moment and rush to your side, Naruto said and then took her in his arms one more time. He said call him on his cell phone, Kara snickered. Late at night when you need his love, Dina mimicked a phone with her hand. He said it can only mean one thing when his hotline blings. Oliver snickered. Asterism. After the Earth could no longer be seen from the spaceship, Naruto sighed deeply. Though his face was covered by his white fox Anbu mask, he did not want the temporary pilot of their ship to see his appearance. Kayubi could easily sense his feelings with his negative emotion sensing. You don't need to feel lonely. You can come and see her anytime you want. Imhum. Naruto made a sound of agreement. You know, I even think it's a good thing you didn't stay together now. Kayubi said. Why? Naruto asked. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, Naruto, he heard Kurama say. Infatuation is an oil fire. It burns bright and hot but it burns fast. If what you and her share is petty infatuation or lust, you will lose interest in each other over time. If not, what you feel will only grow stronger. Oh, Naruto hummed, confusing the Amazon and Kryptonian near him. I guess you're right. You know, you've got some good advice when you actually want to give it. Within the seal, Kurama grinned. I would never lead you astray, son. And it's gone. That elicited a deep inhale of breath from Naruto. Eh, hey, why do you say so? I thought you liked her. The fox snorted at his overly defensive reaction. I do like her. She is a good human. But in the last four days, you've been eating each other's faces up almost non-stop. We did not. Naruto made a weak attempt at contradicting him but a pointed look from Kayubi shut him up. Maybe because it was the first time he had fallen in love for real with a woman or maybe it was because he had repressed his feelings and biological needs as a man for decades due to his obsession with finding a way back to his homeworld, the real reason was not clear for Naruto either, but the passion he felt for Wonder Woman was like a smoldering volcano. Wonder Woman's situation was no different either after living for almost three millennia on Themyscira with no men around. The two of them had spent almost 100% of the last four days in physical contact with each other. They had not made the final step yet but other than that, they did not leave from each other's arms, much to the rest of the Justice League's chagrin since there were only five of them to fight against crime now that Hot Girls left and Wonder Woman would not leave Naruto's room. Nothing like a teammate falling in love to mess up the dynamic, huh? Oliver laughed at Clark who looked like he'd swallowed a lemon. More like reduced team effectiveness, Bruce corrected. You know, you could call us, Oliver glared at him. We're leaguers too, you know. Bruce ignored him. If your feelings for each other are real, the distance will only make your love grow stronger. But if what you feel for each other is limited to just lust and physical attraction, the distance will quickly make them die down. Kayubi said. And how would you know that? You're a biju. Naruto said, annoyed just at the thought that what he and Wonder Woman felt for each other might not be real. One that's seen more than you ever will, Diana said. An elder sees more while sitting than a youth does while standing. While Naruto looked to understand, Kara scrunched her face confusedly. What? I've seen that happen many times before with other humans. I've lived for over 1,000 years and don't forget that I was sealed inside Mito and your mother for almost 80 years too. While sealed for almost one century there was not much left for me to do other than to observe the humans outside. I have my negative emotion sensing too. I may be a biju but there aren't many beings that know more about human feelings and emotions than I do. I certainly know more than you do at the very least. The fox said arrogantly. Humans are very fickle beings and their feelings and emotions are even more than so. Best friends can become enemies in an instant, despite years of friendship, and children can turn against their parents and vice and versa without much difficulty. It is hard, isn't it? Gara's lip quirked up when Jean paused once more. The Martian sighed. First, he had to read about two people kissing and now, another speech. 
You and Diana have met only a few weeks ago and you've been together for just three to four days. It's a few years too early for you to blindly put your trust in her feelings like that. Chances are that you're just lusting for each other. It's too early to tell. Naruto let out another long sigh and gave up on arguing with the fox after hearing his explanation. He knew that when the fox was not playing around, his wisdom was league beyond his. The fox had lived ten times as long as him. Deep inside he understood the truth in his words. You might be right, Kurama-sensei, he said half seriously, half jokingly. I guess some time apart would serve us well, both me and Diana. And that's how they ended up realizing they just wanted a good fuck and decided to see other people instead. Kara closed her eyes. And who is the, other people? You, Diana asked. Kara merely smiled. Jean closed the book. It is over. Oh thank God, Oliver got up and stretched. I've read enough about people kissing to last a lifetime. Me too. Barry agreed. It was graphic. Way too descriptive. I was not okay with it. Too much romance does make my teeth rot, Kara nodded. That's why I like DND. It's got gratuitous violence, adventure and bad roles for days. What? Clark eyed her curiously. Bad roles? Don't worry about it, Clark. There wasn't much conversation between the group and consequently, they were quick to get the next chapter. By the time they settled down one more, the book had gone over to an unhappy looking Oliver who flipped it open without fanfare. The screen came down and lit up as he began to read. Chapter 18 Prelude. Is Naruto still in meditation? The hologram of a white and gold armored woman asked. It was Wonder Woman. Ahem, still there? Answered the deep voice of a male. It came from an elephant sized nine tailed fox. Currently, that giant fox's large tails were stirring up gales of wind as they wagged in the air. The reason for his happiness was the still warm carcass of an enormous beast lying at his feet. His powerful jaws were crushing through its bones and ripping entire chunks of meat from it effortlessly. Talk about having a big appetite, Barry remarked. Wait, what kind of animal is that? Looks a bit like a Tyrannosaurus rex but it's a lot smaller. Hold on, let me find what it is. Hal's eyes glowed green and the ring on his finger lit up brightly. It must be great having a library slash encyclopedia slash search engine on your finger at all times. Dinah said, a bit envious. You can get it too, you just have to overcome your worst fear first, Hal smiled proudly. I run around putting my life on the line every day, I don't think there's any more fears to be faced after that. You'll be surprised, Hal said knowingly. You can have things you don't even know you're afraid of. Is that a dinosaur? Wonder Woman asked, startled. It doesn't look extinct enough to fit the description, Kara joked. Trying to save face, Diana said, it looks like a dinosaur though. Barry shook his head. Dinosaur's a vague term considering it's used both as a general term for reptiles that existed in the Mesozoic era and to describe old and extinct things in general. In several million years, whatever evolved humans who find our bones will probably call us dinosaurs. You couldn't let her get the last word in, could you? Oliver asked. She has to know, Barry defended himself. There's no point in having wisdom without the knowledge to go with it. I guess that's true. Kayubi licked a large amount of blood staining his whiskers before answering. No clue what a dinosaur is, but it's so tasty and it's huge. After that, he went back to devouring his prey. Though the beast's body was four times larger than his, Kayubi needed less than two minutes for the rest of the dinosaur-like creature to disappear into his stomach. With his hunger satiated now, the fox became significantly more talkative. He might not look the part but that idiot is a sage. Staying a few days or a week immersed in his connection with nature is nothing much to him. In that state, his body recovers more easily, gets purified, and it becomes more attuned to natural energy. I hate the fact that your so-called pop culture makes out sages to be misanthropic, old men with long beards and flowing robes who live in forests, Naruto complained. It's not about age, it's about connecting with nature. Kara shrugged. You ask most fantasy lovers what they think a sage would look like and the first person they'd probably tell you is Radagast. I don't know who that is. He's the personification of the stereotype. Oliver picked his ear with his little finger. You should be thankful that molesting young women part didn't catch on as much. What? Naruto's face twisted in disbelief. Yeah, there's a lot of sage tropes you break, Barry agreed. You're young, you're friendly, you don't live in the woods and most of all, you don't live off fruits, nuts and vegetables. Now that I think of it, how do you feel about eating meat? You connect with animals and all, shouldn't it be difficult to eat them? Naruto stared at the speedster flatly. It's not. Animals at each other, I don't see why I wouldn't and if there were some beings higher than us humans, they'd probably prey on us too. Circle of life, huh? Dinah hummed. 
A sound of surprise came from the hologram emitted by the drone flying next to Kyubi. If it's so good for him, why didn't you go directly to that place instead of coming to Earth? She asked curiously. Instead of Kyubi, it was unexpectedly someone else that replied. Be it pure or be it polluted, natural energy in its raw form is poisonous to humans. I don't use only natural energy. I combine natural energy with my own chakra to create Senjutsu which is an amalgam of both. Back then, I was hurt too badly and in no condition to properly manipulate natural energy. If I had absorbed any more of it at that time, I would have died. Going to Earth Seeking Sanctuary was a much better option because I knew the bleeding heart of the Justice League would not turn us down if we came there while I was wounded like that. I didn't have fuel to come to this place even if I wanted to anyway. This planet is extremely far away from the Vega system. It's several galaxies away. After he said that, the newcomer revealed a smile and said teasingly, How are you, Diana? Do you miss me already? Tsunade raised a brow. Newcomer. We already know who it is. Unless Diana's already seeing someone else, Clark tilted his head in the direction of the Amazon who glared at him. All I'm saying is, Kara raised both hands disarmingly, she is Greek. Diana only sighed. At the sight of him, Wonder Woman involuntarily mirrored his smile but she tried to say nonchalantly, I'm just checking up on you to see if you're okay. It's been a week, after all. A snort came from the huge fox behind Naruto. Yeah, it's been a week. As if you totally didn't call me five times until now, starting from the very first day. I'm pretty sure other me would be happy you called so often, Naruto told a red-faced Diana. If he wasn't meditating, he'd have probably done the same. Nothing embarrassing in it. All things considered, five times is a pretty okay number of times to call in seven days, Clark paused to say. It's not obsessive girlfriend level. Unless he meant five times per day, Kara pointed out. Even that's good, it shows you like the person, Oliver argued. It's only nowadays that many people don't want to act like they're invested in a relationship anymore and dating feels more like a competition. Wonder Woman's stoic face suddenly flushed. Karama, you said you wouldn't tell, she half yelled in embarrassment. Kayubi laughed out loud at her expense, very pleased with himself. Haha. I'll leave you two lovebirds by yourselves, he said and left. Meanwhile, Naruto gripped with a hand at his heart. Hearing Kayubi saying that Diana tried to contact him five times already while he had been meditating filled him with warmth. The gap between how serious and stoic she was generally and how she acted when she was flustered was too much. Ah, my heart. This is no good, she's cute as hell. Any more than this and I'll go back to earth this instant. Even after the source of her embarrassment left, Diana's normally pale cheeks were still marred by a rosy color. Naruto motioned the drone to come closer to him and then sat on the grassy ground with his back leaning against the trunk of a tree. I missed you too, he said sincerely. Despite the fact that only one week passed since he left the earth, he already missed her. Yeah, being lovestruck tends to do that to a person, Clark commented. When Lois and I started dating, we'd go on a date and still FaceTime each other after getting home. It was great. It's true. Back when me and my boyfriend, oh wait, that's right, Kara glared at Clark. You never let me have one. The older Kryptonian ignored her. Tell me, what have you been up to these days? Is everything all right over there? Gladly accepting the change in the subject of their conversation, Wonder Woman replied. It became rather hectic after the Justice Lords incident. The government of the USA is now paranoid, thinking that someday the Justice League will also follow in their footsteps to assassinate the president and take over the planet. The United Nations didn't respond well to the Justice League becoming bigger either, saying that there's no reason for us to amass that much power, it's been one annoying meeting after another. I can see why they'd be worried, Kakashi remarked. In the other world, it was just you seven and you still managed to take over the planet. They're not going to let you get any more numbers knowing you're just one death away from turning out like your counterparts. They wouldn't have taken the news well even if the Justice Lords hadn't made an appearance, Clark sighed, when we first started out, I remember the United Nations wanting us to register to some sort of superhero regulation program. I mean, I can see why they're worried about us but they tend to take it too far sometimes, Barry said. No wonder Earth is still so backwater compared to other civilizations in the universe. You're all so divided. So many races, religions and countries are fighting against each other for their own interests. How can you progress like that? You can't. Naruto shook his head. It took us nearly getting exterminated as a race altogether to realize there was nothing to gain from fighting each other. The Akatsuki probably wouldn't have gone as far as they had if the villages asked for help the moment Jinchuriki started going missing rather than suspecting one another. Probably won't be the same with us, Oliver said. If an alien invasion couldn't do the trick, nothing can. Wonder Woman inwardly agreed with what he said and sighed. The Justice League needed to become stronger. 
Earth has had too many close calls. From what I heard, a few years ago Darkseid almost took over the Earth and beat up Superman very badly, almost killing him. It was only thanks to the ruler of New Genesis, the Highfather, that Earth was spared. Then, there was Imperium in its race too, about a year ago. They almost destroyed the planet. We defeated them by the skin of our teeth. But the funny thing is that the talk about Justice League becoming larger has not been brought up until after you came around. A. Why me? You packed them up and proceeded to do the same with their, no holds barred, counterparts, Kara recounted. You're not as powerful as Darkseid but you don't fuck around. If we met anyone else like you who had less pleasant intentions or was simply more ruthless, we'd be dead. Bruce said. You gave us one more wake-up call. We were reminded once more that only seven people are not enough to protect the Earth from invaders. That we need more strength, more manpower. Naruto scratched his cheek, rather embarrassed about what he was about to say. Don't mean to brag but there aren't that many beings as powerful as I am. You can't really compare me to the average alien invaders out there. None that you know about, Clark corrected. Naruto rolled his eyes. When your skin is thick enough to brag like that, why are you scratching your cheek? she said teasingly. Humility. Naruto grinned at Diana. Yes, you're very humble. Yeah, how many times have I bragged here? A lot, Kara said. You showed off that six paths mode too, remember? You didn't have to, but you did. And none of you were as impressed as I hoped you'd be, Naruto grumbled. Kara rubbed his shoulder. If it makes you feel better, you have one of the most aesthetically pleasing power-ups I've seen. Most ones just give people a nasty case of body dysmorphia. Thanks. Hey. The two of them laughed together. Still, things are coming together well. We've already gotten more than 30 new members over the past week. The two girls you've saved, Starfire and Supergirl have joined the League too. Superman also roped in Aquaman too and convinced him to support it financially. We have another billionaire supporting us, Maxwell Lord, and there are two members among the Justice League that are very wealthy as well. So financial resources are not an issue and we get new members every day, metahumans from all over the world. We are international already. We got members not only from the USA but from Europe, India and Africa too. Kara glared at Clark. You let other me, a few months out of ice, into the league? Clark looked just as mortified. I know right? What was I thinking? That's not the point. The point is you let a 14-year-old into the league. Shazam is a 10-year-old who turns to a grown man. I think it's already been established that you can get in as a kid given the right circumstances. Oliver reminded her of one of the few magical members of the league. I'm just surprised people are actually coming from Africa. They tend to keep out of the larger world's business most of the time, Bruce remarked. Well, I guess they have a stake in this too, it is the whole world we defend, Clark said. Naruto was not that familiar with the Earth's geography since, before he and Wonder Woman became lovers, he never cared about the Earth enough to study that. Nonetheless, he listened to Wonder Woman talk about what she had been up to with interest. Actually, we found something interesting. Japan has created a system different from other countries. They have agencies of heroes that manage and control the metahumans willing to serve. By the way, Japan is a country in the Asian continent, with over 100 million people. Am I the only one who thinks of Power Rangers and Ultraman whenever I hear Japan and superhero in the same sentence? Barry asked. Nope. Kara shook her head. Pretty clever stuff with the agency though. I think the stuff got better received than the UN's own. I'm certain theirs isn't an unsubtle attempt at integrating the metahumans into the military and using them to their own ends under the guise of regulation, Bruce said. He, that sounds interesting. How does that work? Naruto asked, genuinely curious. The hero agencies are regulated by the law and they pay taxes to the government too. In exchange, they can hire and manage all metahumans that are willing to serve. They still wear costumes and masks to protect their identity from the villain's retaliation, but they no longer need to have a civilian job too. Their work is considered legal now, not just a vigilante's act. They can work full-time as heroes and get paid for it. The government even created a public high school for teaching metahuman kids how to be a professional hero. Everything is super organized. When I found out about their system I also realized why we've never been to Japan to help out with arresting any rogue metahumans or to assist in case of natural disasters, because they're handling it perfectly by themselves. They don't need the Justice League over there. The heroes listened to Oliver read words with wide eyes. They. Dot get paid to be heroes? Kara couldn't believe her ears, and they have a school for it too? That's it, I'm going to Japan. Kara flipped Clark both her middle fingers. Moja suti sarigu ni wa senka shitakanai. Clark squinted. What? It's Japanese, Bruce told him. I'm surprised you know the language, Kara. 
I signed up for the language on Duolingo and I pretty much had to get fluent in it because the app kept threatening to dox me if I didn't, Kara said. The Duolingo bird is crazy. That aside, it's quite a good plan to gain more heroes, Kakashi said. Nothing motivates a person to do the right thing more than the promise of making a living from doing so. Like that, the two of them talked without noticing the passing of time. They realized how long they had been chatting for only when the sky started getting darker. Ah, I must have bored you talking about hero-related stuff for that long, Wonder Woman said apologetically. Naruto shook his head. Don't worry about it. It was kind of refreshing. I've never talked like this with a girl until I met you. You're my first girlfriend, have I told you that? You've never dated anyone? Diana asked Naruto. Not really, he shrugged. The closest I ever got was with Ryazetsu and Well. Wow. That's a surprise, Kara said. Maybe he was right about it being a good thing I wasn't born a guy. That's surprising, to say the least, Wonder Woman said. Eh? Why so? I've never been the most popular guy around. You must be joking. You have this charm that draws people to you. Even Green Lantern, Superman, and the others, did you not notice? They were torn between liking you and wanting to chase you away due to how dangerous you are. Oliver stopped reading. It must have been playing hide and seek because I could not see it. You're not alone, Clark said. I might have come to accept that you're not as bad a guy as I initially thought but I wouldn't go as far as to say I like you. Naruto waved the man off. I'm sure you were just having an internal crisis, I'm a very likable person. Naruto chuckled at her words, he was not convinced. No way. Back in my homeworld, I was an outcast. It was only in the last few months during my stay there that things had started to come around for me but that's only because I literally convinced someone to bring people back to life from the dead. Until then, since Karama was sealed inside of me, I was just the demon brat, in the eyes of the ordinary people while for the government of my country, I was a human sacrifice, a weapon of war. On my home planet, people that had demons sealed inside them were used to maintain the balance of power between the strongest five nations on the continent. You could say that we were the equivalent of nuclear missiles on Earth. Whoever had the strongest jinchuriki or a higher number of them held the advantage. That's horrible, Wonder Woman said, but he smiled. He did not seem that affected by his past anymore. It's been over a hundred years since then, anyone would have gotten over it, Naruto said. Thon hates me because I didn't take him as an apprentice, or something, I never really understood what he said back then. Barry rubbed his chin as he tried to remember. Point is, some people have really long memories and don't want to move on. It's difficult to get over the effects of something like ostracism, much less when you had a whole childhood of it. It's more of a testament as to your strength of character than a natural thing, Diana smiled at him. Ah, you're going to make me blush. Naruto smiled bashfully and looked away. It wasn't all that bad though. I had good times as well. And I think it's because I was a Jinchuriki that I got to meet great people too. My mentor, Jiraiya, an ant-like figure named Tsunade and also Gara, a friend who was just like me. Ah, that reminds me, if Jiraiya sensei could see you, even his ghost would die of blood loss haha. He was a massive pervert. The biggest pervert I've ever met. Seeing you, especially when you were wearing your previous costume would have been fatal. Excuse me. Diana narrowed her eyes at Naruto. What's that supposed to mean? You're wearing a skirt so short, everything beneath would be exposed to the world if you so much as hopped a few inches in the air, Tsunade pointed at the skirt in question. It's not even a real skirt, it looks like flaps of cloth overlapping each other. It's good for distracting people though, Kakashi giggled perversely. He's out of line but he's right, Dina agreed. Half the reason I dress like this is because I know guys can't help but stare, even mid-fight. It's why I beat Oliver so easily. You didn't need to tell them that, babe, Oliver said quietly. They already know. Still, the archer sighed and continued reading. What's that supposed to mean? What's wrong with the way I used to dress? Naruto felt a sensation of danger but he braved in with no hesitation. Do you want the straight answer or the sensible one? He asked and then chuckled when she saw her narrowing her eyes. Your costume looked like something a hooker would wear. Naruto, she yelled. A flustered Diana waved a fist at the laughing blonde. If he didn't have such a good-looking face, she'd punch him. Asterism several hours passed and the two of them were still filled with as much energy as when they just started. By now, it was already midnight. Three moons of various sizes were shining brightly above his head. It's beautiful, isn't it? Naruto asked and directed the camera at the sky. It was not only the three moons that were shining but the night sky was also brightly lit up by countless clusters of stars and even distant nebulas could be seen. With no artificial lights at all and with the planet's peculiar location in the universe, that night sky was something one could find on very few other planets. Violet, 
red, yellow, blue, and even green lights gave the night sky an otherworldly feeling. It's beautiful, Kara whispered, taken by the sight. The others shared the same thought. Nature is at its finest when untouched by man, Jeanne commented. It is amazing. Wonder Woman said in genuine awe. I discovered this planet by accident while wandering through the boundless void outside the known universe. I have traveled for so many years and to so many places but I have yet to see a place as beautiful as this. I named this planet Myoboku. 1. That explains why I couldn't find anything, Hal said. It's outside the sectors. This should convince the Guardians to go on another expedition outside the boundaries. So those worlds can get inhabited and polluted? Naruto frowned at the lantern. Do you really like the idea of other worlds ending up like Earth? No, Hal admitted, but even if they're not going to be inhabited, we still need to know about them. Some things are better off left untouched and unknown, Hal. Naruto gestured for Oliver to keep reading before the lantern could respond. He sighed wistfully and said, I wish you were here with me now to see it in person. The two of them stood silent for a while, just watching the night sky together. Since they started their conversation several hours ago, it was the first time they were silent. Say, Naruto, will you come to spend the Christmas together with me? It's a winter holiday people celebrate on Earth. Originally, it was a religious celebration but it lost its meaning with time. Now, it is mostly a holiday when people exchange gifts and spend time together with their family. You're already seeing yourself making a family with me? Naruto slung an arm over Diana's shoulder to pull her closer. The embarrassed Amazon rose into the air and out of his reach. You know you can't just float away from everything you don't want to talk about, right? Oh, we had something similar back in my homeworld. It was called the Rinne Festival, but I've never celebrated it before, Naruto said. His voice was a bit melancholic. I haven't celebrated Christmas on Earth either because I only came to the man's world last year and I didn't have anyone to celebrate it with back then, Wonder Woman said. Then, she smiled and added in a soft voice, but now I have you. He felt a rush of warmth in his heart at her words. I've never been a big fan of the holidays. To an orphan like me, it used to be the time of the year when I was the loneliest. But now I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad I met you, Diana. I am in love with you. I love you too, Kara mimicked Diana's voice. Seriously now, you should be proud of yourself for melting his heart. Even if you're basically grooming him with your age difference. Diana groaned. Why do you have to bring that up so often? You're older than him too. Chronologically. A hint of pink appeared in her cheeks and she smiled shyly. Unwittingly, she rolled a strand of her black long black hair around her finger. It gave her an excuse to look down and prevent him from seeing her flustered face. You really don't know how cute you look when you do things like that, Naruto told Diana who'd been idly playing with her hair like her other self. For real, Kara agreed. Kook, that gap mo will be the death of me someday. Naruto said and gripped with a hand at his chest again when he saw her reaction. She was as weak to his compliments as ever and he was as weak to her cuteness as always. They were both deadly to each other. Seriously, you haven't bothered to study the geography of Earth but you learned all kinds of degenerated things from the internet. She rebuked him but that half annoyed, half embarrassed expression on her face only served to make him grin wider. All the better to please you with, Kara smirked at Diana who gasped when she understood. Who needs geography when you can watch porn? Kakashi joked, I don't. Imagine going on the internet as an alien to search for the rules of the planet and finding rule 34 by accident. Barry chuckled at the thought. HNG, what's wrong with the internet? If there is anything great at Earth, it's the internet. I've never come across something as good as that on any other planet. I quite enjoyed it, especially the digital art with you in them. Look, I even downloaded some of them for my own use. There aren't as many other races that openly enjoy sex like humans, Hal said. Most other races that find out about us having sex just for pleasure and casually on Earth are usually mortified at worst and jealous at best. What about the ones that do? Kara asked. Most of them are even hornier than humans, Hal replied. Don't get any ideas though. There aren't actually all that many races with external organs. Many are mammals too but they mate like chickens and fishes. That sounds boring. Dinah said. She wasn't crude by nature, but she liked sex a lot, the process especially. She couldn't imagine a life where sex meant just getting cream pied instantly. It's not for pleasure with them, they just want offspring. It's still boring, Kakashi shrugged. 90% of the fun is the process. Then, he grabbed another device and showed her an image of her at the beach. In that image, Wonder Woman was leaning on her elbows on the counter of a beach bar with her voluptuous breasts almost spilling out of the white bikini top she was wearing. Furthermore, her long black hair was wet, her white teeth were biting softly into her red lower lip and her eyes were looking ahead half-narrowed, seductively. Obviously, it was a fake picture, 
The Amazon princess had never been to a beach after she left the island of paradise. But Diana exploded. Diana tried to ignore the way Kara and Naruto ogled at her image but when she saw a line of drool leaving the girl's mouth, she growled. You know that's not actually you. Kara remained unfazed. It's almost as good as I think you'd look under the armor. Kara. Clark cried, shocked. What do you mean for, your own use, Naruto? I swear to great Athena, when I get my hands on you. As, flattering as I think it is that you, touch yourself to me, I don't feel comfortable with it, Diana said to Naruto who looked just as uncomfortable hearing her words as she was with saying them. You'll be saying a different thing after you two finally fuck, Diana smiled teasingly. Jesus, babe. Oliver shook his head. What was it with everyone being so uncouth this time? Am I lying? No, asterism it was in the wee hours of the morning that Naruto and Diana finally ended their conversation. Though quite some time passed since then, he was still smiling, glowing with happiness. Is this what I've been missing on for almost 100 years? In his obsession with finding a way back to his homeworld, he had purposely avoided unnecessary contact and personal relationships with other people. He had not wanted to become distracted from his goal. Because of that, as years passed and he watched all the death and destruction happening on a large scale across the universe, his heart grew colder and more indifferent. He became jaded. However, in spite of that, in just a little over one month, that layer of stone isolating his heart from the world outside cracked. Not knowing when or how, a black-haired warrior princess had sneaked past his defenses and slipped into his heart. There were over a dozen job offers pending his answer from other information brokers that had jumped in at the chance to fill the void left by Rui Nak's death but he was in no mood to work or do anything else. Now, all he could think of was Diana. He was still drunk with happiness from the time he spent talking with her when a loud beeping sound came from his lightwave communication device. Who could it be? He wondered absent-mindedly when he did not recognize the number calling him. I just ignore unknown numbers. If caller ID doesn't turn up any result, it's the red button, Bruce said. He had too much to risk letting a potential hacker get access to his phone. Clark was of a different opinion. I pick them. You never know who might be calling. Seeing as it was not Diana, he ignored it and went back to watching the sky while thinking about her. But several minutes passed and the beeping would not stop. Business calls, mercenary. Barry deepened his voice. It can't all be love and roses. Fine, goddammit. Hope their house was burning or something cuz I'll be pissed if they bother me for no reason, he muttered to himself in annoyance. Making a clawing motion with his hand, his white fox ambu mask materialized over his face. When he hit the accept button, it was a muscular man dressed in a red suit and wearing a winged silver helmet on his head that appeared. What the hell? Though they had never met in person until then, as a well-informed intergalactic mercenary, Naruto knew that man's identity. It was none other than Orion, one of the strongest and most valiant among the new gods of New Genesis. He was a rather famous character in the universe for his repeated clashes with the ruler of Apocalypse, Darkseid. Someone like that calling him on his personal lightwave device was not something that he had seen it coming. Orion? Clark blinked. What in the world would he be calling Naruto for? Who's Orion? Naruto asked. One of Darkseid's sons, Hal replied. Probably the only one who truly hates him too. If he called you, he probably wants to put a hit out on his dad's head. Diana frowned. He can't kill Darkseid. I think Orion's ready to risk it. I am Orion of New Genesis. The god introduced himself. I know who you are. What does a god need from a mortal like me? Naruto asked. Though his words seemed polite, the tone he spoke them with was far from that. He had no reverence for anyone that called themselves gods. Not after witnessing the terror of the void, the power of the universe. In front of something like that, even gods were little more than insects. Whether Orion noticed his disrespectful tone or not would remain a mystery because he answered to Naruto's question without pause, right away. I need you to kill my father. Oliver shut the book promptly. I'm done. Pretty direct guy, this Orion. Mr. Miracle's the one you go to if you want a speech, Hal said. You know you're doing something wrong in life when your own brother hates you and your son wants you dead for something other than your properties, Kakashi idly remarked. Shay Notori properties lo Shay Pa chief? The silver-haired man blinked. I'm sorry? Nothing, Kara smiled to herself, nothing at all. Your day went from zero to a hundred real fucking quick, Oliver remarked. It's like chilling on a yatch with models and the next thing you know, you're coughing up saltwater on a remote island with the wreckage of the boat washing up next to you. That's really specific, Naruto looked at the archer strangely. It happened to me. Oh, it happens to all of us. One moment, you're going through your regular life and the next, you're suiting up to stop an evil mutated scientist from wrecking a building or something else, Clark said. Kara nodded. Tell me about it. 
I was about calling it a day with patrols when I got sucked into here. I beg your pardon? Momentarily, he thought that he heard wrong. Do you want me to kill the High Father? I don't kill everyone, bub. Look here and read what it says. Taking out one of his business cards, he pointed with this index finger at the part where it said he took assassination bounties but for scumbags only. How do you tell who's a scumbag and who's not? Kara asked. Do you just go on the customer's account in your gut feeling? He probably does some research on the person before running off to kill them, Naruto suggested. That's about all I can think of. Negative emotions don't really help here because you wouldn't try getting a person killed if you didn't hate them. Or you could simply be using their death as a means to an end. Kakashi offered. I don't hate anyone I've killed. Point is, I either wouldn't sense anything or anything out of the usual you'd expect from someone trying to get a person killed, Naruto said. Orion shook his head. Hi father is not my biological father. My real father is Darkseid. Previously, Apocalypse and New Genesis had been locked in a war for tens of thousands of years. However, an uneasy truce was established when Darkseid and High Father exchanged their newborn sons. Darkseid's son, me, was given to High Father and vice versa. I don't get it. Why would they do that? Barry asked. That's just asking for trouble. What if Darkseid corrupts High Father's son? It could be a sort of hostage situation. One can't try something against the other without putting his son in danger, Bruce replied. Hal snorted. Good luck using Darkseid's kid against him. He doesn't care about anything other than himself. Wouldn't High Father have considered that? Tsunade asked. He wouldn't use something as leverage if he didn't know it could be used against him. Kakashi shrugged. We can deliberate and debate but in the end, only they know the reason for doing what they did. The terms of the non-aggression pact between the two societies of gods were not known to the general public. Naruto had not known about them until then either. The gods were generally shrouded in mystery and not much was known about them besides some of their feats. In the first place, the new gods lived in a different dimension altogether. Why ask me of all people? Better yet, why not do it yourself? Kakashi shrugged. Destroying an entire planet in a day tends to give you a hell of a reputation, even if it's an inflated one. Naruto raised a brow. If Darkseid's so powerful, why would he think I'd be able to kill him just because I wiped out one race? Doesn't he destroy planets himself? He probably thinks you've got a better chance than most. There aren't many mercenaries who've done what you did, Hal said. Well, there's Lobo but you've seen how he is. Even if he was able to fight Darkseid, he's largely unreliable and could probably end up killing everyone except the man himself. And he said there's a truce between them so Highfather's son, getting caught personally trying to shuffle Darkseid off the mortal coil is about the same as declaring war, Tsunade pointed out. And a mercenary sent after him by Highfather's son, isn't the same? Naruto asked confusedly. What if I get caught and I end up spilling the beans about who sent me? Then the war's back on, probably, Kakashi smiled with his eyes. Oh, and you'll be dead. Joy. Orion said bitterly, I've tried to kill Darkseid my entire life but I couldn't. He is too powerful and is always surrounded by his nigh-unbeatable army and countless parademons. And now with the truce between Apocalypse and New Genesis, invading Apocalypse by myself could spark the start of a new great war. I'll never do something like that. I won't spit on Highfather's efforts to maintain the peace. Kara stood up. This is Kara zor here, reminding you that it's not cool to waste the sacrifices your people made just so you can gain the personal satisfaction of killing your evil father. Instead, hire someone to waste them for you. But, although a mortal, you have enough power to even destroy a planet, without the use of technology. That is a feat I could never replicate. You could destroy Apocalypse and Darkseid together. It's not as simple as nuking the planet, Clark sighed. Apocalypse is already a dead world. Literally nothing but Darkseid and his subordinates inhabit the place and even if he did somehow destroy the planet, there's little chance he'll kill anything more than the Parademons. I don't think Orion knows any of that, Hal pointed at the man on the screen. Or he must think my name's Mr. Miracle, Naruto snorted. Clark and Hal shared a laugh, confusing him. What? There's a god named Mr. Miracle. Clark chuckled. Oh. Naruto nodded slowly. Naruto sighed. I'm afraid I'll have to refuse this bounty. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Oliver nodded. He almost died taking out the scions. There's no point in losing your life on a mission you know you can't accomplish, Diana said. That's not a sacrifice, that's just a waste. Orion immediately became angry. Why? He shouted. Billions of innocent people were massacred by Darkseid and his army in his crusades. You have the power to end it all. Why aren't you doing anything? In contrast, Naruto was as calm as the water of a still lake. He could not just willy-nilly destroy a planet. He nearly paid with his life for amassing that much power before. His power was restricted by the environment. 
He grew stronger the more power he siphoned from the world, but it could also work against him like it did on the Scion's planet. There are limits to my power. There are certain conditions to be fulfilled in order for me to obtain that kind of strength. If those conditions are fulfilled, then yes, killing Darkseid, are you, or anyone really, would be like killing chickens. Otherwise, I can't defeat a god like Darkseid, to say nothing of his army and those mutated beasts you call parademons. If he were to fight anyone on Myoboku, on his untainted and pristine planet, he could stomp even on gods like they were bugs. On a planet like Apocalypse, however, a wasteland of fire and smoke, he would be nowhere near that level. Oh yeah, I forgot about that tainted stuff too. Clark rubbed his chin. Apocalypse really is the worst place to use sage mode. You don't say. I think even the great toad sage wouldn't be able to survive gathering senjutsu there, if he could even gather it at all. But even if I was strong enough to do it, I would still not accept your bounty. Know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Oliver nodded. Respectable. No shit he's folding. If Highfather and New Genesis couldn't do the job of wiping out Apocalypse, what the hell makes you think he could? Hal laughed. Yeah, the job sounds stupid. Tsunade agreed. He's a mercenary, not a genie. Though Orion's head was covered by the winged silver helmet he was wearing, Naruto could discern that his face was contorted in anger. The new god had some very pronounced anger management issues. Clark frowned. He might have been raised in New Genesis but he's still his father's son. At least he's on your side, even if you might not agree with his methods, Naruto said. I wonder what Highfather's son is like now. You said him and Darkseid are basically opposites of each other, right? They have similarities but yeah, they're different for the most part. They're brothers, they just don't like each other. Hal scratched his hair. It doesn't help that Highfather's beaten Darkseid a handful of times and if there's one thing Darkseid hates. It's being beaten. Clark finished for the lantern. Even more so when it happens more than once and the person who does it is still alive. Supposedly you're a god. Don't you know how the universe works? Do you need me, a mortal, to spell it for you? Seeing Orion not replying, Naruto continued, Light and darkness, good and evil, life and death, creation and destruction. The universe cannot exist without a balance of both. No matter how much you fight against evil, you can never eradicate it. I annihilated the Scion race almost two months ago. Do you think that my deed was all that great? Bitter laughter came from him. What do you mean by that? Orion asked, this time calmer than before. Naruto's obscure words had sobered him up. I liberated the Vega system from the Scion's tyranny. That is indeed a great deed if you look at it alone. But less than two months passed since the Scions were killed. Wait a few more months or years and you will see. A new power of darkness will rise to take their place. Obviously, it won't be in the same place. But mark my words, in the following months or years, a new intergalactic power will appear, an intergalactic power hell bent on conquering and destruction. It's true, Hal agreed. The Scion's destruction would have left a power vacuum that, pretty much everyone would be scrambling to fill. Their successors would be either like them or worse. And if you kept killing them as they came, they'd come to understand that death comes with the position, Kakashi said. Meaning only the worst of the worst would be vying for it, Bruce argued. Half the reason why I don't kill my enemies is because I don't want them getting replaced by worse people. Well, we all have different methods of doing things, the silver-haired man smiled. That's not an effective way of doing things though, Clark said. Even you'd get tired after a while. Nonsense. I killed the leader of a family-owned crime syndicate in Fang Country back when I was 12. When his wife tried getting revenge, I killed her also and when their twin children who took over tried to avenge their parents, I killed them both. The group is in shambles and Fang Country is doing better now. It works, eventually. You wiped out an entire family. Clark couldn't believe his ears. Kakashi merely gave him a thumbs up with a proud look on his face. He raised his head and looked at the sky. The first signs of the morning started to appear at the horizon as pale orange rays of light shooed away the darkness of the night. It's almost poetic. I was like the daybreak when I brought light upon the Vega system. But while morning comes here, on the other side of the planet, evening falls. Just like that, while the Vega system was liberated, in another part of the universe, darkness will rise. This is the law of the universe. There is always a balance between light and darkness. Once the balance tips in favor of either of the two, it will be destroyed. Looking back at his device, he told Orion, Do you understand now? Even if you somehow managed to kill Darkseid, it would amount to nothing. Another one will rise to take his place. This is the truth of this world. This is the truth that I've come to know. No matter how powerful you are, no matter if you are a god or an all-powerful being, you could never extinguish evil. Evil finds a way. Kara muttered, that at least is true, Clark nodded. 
most of Darkseid's subordinates hate him as much as they envy him but they serve him anyway. If he somehow died today, I'm sure most if not all of them would try taking his place as ruler of Apocalypse. Then why did you annihilate the Scions if you knew another force would take their place? Why do all that if it's meaningless? Orion countered. Either I spend the rest of my life looking over my shoulder and eventually end up on an operating table or kill them now, Naruto shrugged. It's kind of a no-brainer, don't you think? Yeah, I'd have done the same thing too, Kara nodded. But it wasn't meaningless for me. The Scions wanted to capture me and make me their toy. For the universe at large, the Scions' destruction is nothing but for me it was crucial. I don't have to live my life looking over my shoulder in fear of their plots. The Scions were a powerful race, one of the most technologically advanced races in the universe. Having such a threat looming over my head at all times would undoubtedly spell my death eventually if I didn't do something about it. But Darkseid and I have no friction. He never acted against me. Why should I take on such a dangerous job for no reason? As I said, even if Darkseid died, another god of evil will rise in his place. There must always be a god of evil. And don't tell me I should do it for the reward. What reward could be worth it for me to go fight against the god of evil and his intergalactic army, by myself? That's suicide. You want me to do what you, Highfather, and your army of gods could not do even after dozens of thousands of years. Do you hear yourself? Orion became silent for a few moments. When put that way, he realized how ridiculous it sounded for him to ask of one man in a demon fox to do what he and an army of gods could not do even after thousands and thousands of years. He let out a deep sigh. He understood why would that be seen as a suicidal mission. Though they could not close the deal, he did not end the call right away and, instead, he asked a question regarding the words that the blonde had told him before. If what you say about evil being indestructible is true, what is the point of fighting? What is the point of it all? With such a bleak look on life, how does one muster the will and strength to continue on living? Fight, Diana said. Evil overwhelms. If everyone in the past just rolled over and let what was going to happen, happen, we wouldn't be here. And stop looking in the grand scheme. Just focus on making a difference in the place where you do matter. Naruto joined in. Somehow, from offering an assassination bounty, they ended up discussing the meaning of life. It's like that sometimes, Bruce nodded. It happens more often with Deathstroke and I than anyone else. Do you and the world's deadliest mercenary have a chat mid-battle? Oliver asked skeptically. Sometimes you hit a stalemate so bad, the only victory you can try to get is with words, Naruto said. Is that why you talk people into killing themselves? Kara snickered. I don't never mind. Naruto sighed. You fight to achieve your goals. You may never be able to eradicate the darkness but that doesn't mean you cannot live in the light. You may never be able to protect every single being in the universe, but you could always devote yourself to protecting the ones you love and care about. You may never achieve peace in the universe at large, but you could make peace in your house, in your city, in your country, in your homeworld. Naruto said. Life in itself has no meaning. You give your own life meaning when you find something and devote yourself to it. And that could be anything. It could be your family, it could be your job, or it could even be a hobby or a passion like music or fishing. Or gaming. Kara looked at Clark. I'm not getting you a console, Kara. Oh don't worry about it, Clark. She looked at Bruce who pretended not to notice her. Don't worry about it at all. Not long after that, their conversation ended and Naruto went back to watching the sky, also thinking about the words that he had told Orion. A sudden voice came from his shoulder, startling him. Not knowing when, Kayubi had returned to his side. So you found a new purpose in life? Previously, Naruto's reason to live, his goal, had been to find a way back to the elemental nations. He had devoted nearly a century of his life to it, completing over 3,000 bounties and traveling through the universe unceasingly for it. It had been more than just a goal, it had been an obsession. But, when Kayubi gave him a wake-up call and he finally realized the futility of it all, he was broken he had been lost. But now, he was found. Kara sing song was blind, but now he sees. Oliver took to humming the tune. I don't even know why you two know the song. Neither of you even go to church, Bruce said. Neither do you. Oliver accused him. And I used to, Kara replied. Matter of fact, I still do whenever I can't use the superhero excuse to escape Sunday service. Let me guess, it has to do with a certain warrior princess, doesn't it? Kayubi pressed on and chuckled. He's going to be spending his life trying to get some Amazusi. Only Clark heard Kara speak under her breath. Jesus Christ, Kara. Clark wanted to scream. Diana blinked. While I appreciate being that important to someone, I wouldn't want them making me their purpose. But without you, he'd serve no purpose in life. Oliver grinned. His purpose in life would be to be in my streams, sucking on my dick daily. 
His purpose in life would be to be in that chat blowing a dick daily. Excuse me? Naruto glared at the archer. His life would be worth nothing, he'd serve zero purpose, he would have to kill himself. Now, Kara laughed. Naruto looked at Diana who shrugged. Naruto flicked his snout, making the fox let out a yelp. So what if it does? He grumbled. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna say it's too early, but that's how I feel now. I can't help it, okay. I like her a lot and I'm happy. What's wrong with that? Nothing is wrong per se but the higher the expectations, the bigger the disappointment if things fall down. So I'll say it again, it's too early. Yeah, she could still leave you for another alien mercenary who decides to stay on Earth instead. Barry shrunk under the duo's glare. Not that you'd get dumped, but emotions are fickle, Kakashi said, and if you'd spent your entire time looking forward to coming back to her only to find that she's lost interest in you, it'd leave you a wreck. What about me? Diana frowned. What if it's the other way round? Unlike him, you have millions of men who'd be happy to repair your heart, Clark pointed out. I'm not saying it wouldn't affect you but come on, he's a space-exploring misanthrope. One heartbreak and that's the end of relationships for him. I wouldn't call other me a misanthrope but yeah, my heart's a fragile thing. Naruto clutched his chest. If you left me, I'd never like anyone again. Diana snorted amusedly. I'm sure you wouldn't. Silence instilled between the two of them for a while. Eventually, Kayubi said. Oi, how about you wipe that disgusting smile off your face and do some work? Naruto threw the fox off his shoulder in annoyance. What's wrong with my smile? He retorted. What's so disgusting about it? The fox snorted. HNG, that love struck face you're making is gross. I threw up a little in my mouth. Nothing makes my teeth rot like romance, Kara nodded. That's why I like DND. No romance, just mental simulations of gratuitous violence. Naruto stood up and started rubbing his fists. Looks like you got a lot of courage after getting a win over me on Earth while I was weakened. Come, Karama sama, let's have another go at it now that I've fully recovered. That's true, it's been a month already. Naruto smiled widely. I'm free. God, please let him lose again because it'd be so funny. Oliver put his hands together in prayer. Kayubi revealed a scared face and he jumped from his place as if he had springs in his legs. You won't get away. Naruto hollered after him and threw himself into his pursuit. Man and fox started shinobi jumping at breakneck speeds through the virgin jungle, greatly startling the creatures in their way. Using his four limbs and his nine tails, Kayubi was unsurprisingly extremely agile while in the trees, even more than Naruto. Four limbs beat opposable thumbs, son. Naruto rolled his eyes. You talk the talk but you can't walk the walk, eh? Haha. Ha. Kayubi yelled at his back and laughed, confident that Naruto was not going to catch up to him anytime soon. But the fox's laughter died in its throat when a particular dagger with an inscription written on its handle whirred by his ear, nearly nicking him. Kayubi did not get scared by the dagger almost stabbing him but he got scared about what he knew it was going to come next. And true to his predictions, a dark blonde-haired man appeared with his hand on the handle of the dagger, in midair, in a yellow flash of light. Ah, I'll never get used to seeing that, Kakashi commented. Naruto looked sour, and I'll never get how he learned it. The closest I've ever come is what those three guys showed me. Kakashi bit back a snort. The fourth Hokage's personal guards back when he was alive as well as the only three men he divulged the secret of the Hiraishin to, relegated to, those three guys. Cheater was the only thing Kayubi had the time to yell before Naruto kicked him down from the tree like a football. With a shot like that, he could have been a German in the World Cup nine years ago. Oliver snickered. Barry shook his head. Jesus, man. Asterism, you're in an awfully good mood today, Naruto remarked. It's been quite some time since we went on a proper job, hasn't it? More than half a year. I kinda missed it. Kayubi replied, his tails wagging happily behind him. I wonder who we're going to kill now. Naruto looked weary. Of course killing came next. It wouldn't be Kurama if he didn't want to kill someone. At his words, Naruto was surprised to realize that, indeed, they had not taken jobs like they used to ever since they rescued Superman from the Preserver's ship. He had been depressed for months after realizing that it was impossible to find a way back home. He had not taken any bounties in the meantime, just staying on his lush planet, Myoboku, doing nothing but fishing and lazying around all day long. Then, when they finally accepted a bounty, it turned out to be bogus, a trap from the Scions and Rui Nak. It was only now that they were finally going again on a proper job. Naruto bonked him on the head and chuckled. We're not going to kill anyone this time. It's an espionage mission, you brute. After typing a few commands to the AI of the ship to adjust their course, Naruto said. Man, I miss our old ship. 
after Kayubi destroyed their previous ship while trying to get rid of the yellow power ring that had attempted to kidnap him, Naruto bought a new spaceship from the black market. Why? This one is capable of space warping too and it's pretty much the same size as the other one, the fox said. It's never the same. You'd have made memories with the old one, Naruto complained. Think of it. Our first time rescuing a Kryptonian male. Your first time nearly eating a Kryptonian male. Diana smiled. Clark sighed. Our first time rescuing a Kryptonian female. Your first time extorting me. Clark glared at him. Naruto waved him away. It's been over a dozen chapters ago now, Clark. Move on. Kurama shook his head. It's a bit slower and it doesn't have cloaking abilities so we can't go incognito anymore. This mission would have been so much easier if we could go invisible like before. They were currently in the Milky Way galaxy, Cygnus system. The objective of their new mission was to infiltrate the habitable planets in that planetary system and gather intelligence. I say, screw the infiltrate thing and just smash your way through. Who's gonna stop us? Kayubi said arrogantly. Naruto chuckled at his words. That's what our employer wants, secrecy, that's what we have to do, he said to placate the fox. Besides, not all things can be solved with force, not all the time. The fox sniffed but did not retort. But who would have thought the Green Lantern Corps would send us a job offer? That Green Lantern from Earth said that they named you and I universal level threats. You'd think they'd want nothing to do with the likes of us, Naruto said in wonder. Better to have you as allies than enemies, Hal said. I'm pretty sure the Guardians could have sent anyone else, they just wanted to establish a good rapport with you. They could have just sent me cash. I always appreciate free money, Naruto shrugged. Nice try, sneak thief. A few days ago, Diana called him on his lightwave device and told him that Jon Stewart had something very important to discuss with him. It turned out to be a job offer from the Guardians of the Universe. The two members of the Green Lantern Corps assigned to watch over the Universe Sector that included the Cygnus system of the Milky Way galaxy were suddenly killed a few weeks before. Two new Green Lanterns were assigned to that sector but they were killed shortly after that too. In total, four Green Lanterns died, without the Guardians even knowing the reason for their deaths. Before doing something drastic like invading the sector with a punitive force, the Guardians decided to take on a more subtle approach and use other means of obtaining some information first. The mercenary caterpillar was, not surprisingly, their first choice. That way, not only would they protect their core from further damage, but they would also create the opportunity to start a relationship with the powerful mercenary. Two birds, one stone. Hal smirked. He liked being right. Through the cockpit's window, a dark purplish marble could be seen in the distance, it was one of the very few habitable planets in the Cygnus system, Debstam. Wait, I know that place. Hal's eyes glowed green before they widened. Oh shit. Clark frowned. What is it? Mongol uses that place as a home. Hal said and looked at Naruto. Karama's right. You'd have been better off taking the scorched earth approach because if you get found out, you'll have to fight your way out. Naruto raised a brow. I'm guessing this Mongol doesn't take well to unwelcome visitors? Quite the opposite, Clark said sourly. He takes to them too well. He's the ruler of ranks, a moving planet where he holds gladiatorial fights with all races that he captures. If he finds you, he'll try keeping you prisoner. And the same guy who wiped out the Scions would make a valuable jewel in his collection. Naruto caught on fast. Well shit. Can't any job be simple? That's not life, I'm afraid, Dinah said as she shut the book. I'm also afraid the chapter's over. Naruto looked at Hal. You seem really worried about that guy. Is he really that dangerous? It's not Mongol himself I'm worried about, Hal said gravely, it's how he captures people. The Black Mercy, Naruto, Hal stated grimly, he uses the Black Mercy. Kara blinked. That, sounds ominous. What is it? A parasitic plant that feeds on the psychic energy of its victims, Clark replied. It traps its victims in a dreamlike state where they live out their definition of a perfect world. The ninjas shared a look. That sounded an uncomfortable lot like the Muggin Tsukiyomi. Not a dream. Hal shook his head. It's a reality. The only ways to escape is for the plant to lose its grip on you, if someone pulls it off of you or if you eventually figure out that it's all a hoax. I already told you about Madara's plan, Naruto said. That one traps you in your dream until your chakra is completely absorbed, you wither away and your corpse becomes another one of the mindless Zetsu. That's pretty bad but trust me, you still don't want to deal with the Black Mercy, Hal argued. You eventually become aware it's a scam by some hungry plant, Hal. I get if you're captured before that happens but by itself, it doesn't sound all that bad. It's one thing to realize you're living a false life and it's another to want to leave. Everyone turned to look at Bruce who looked distant, as if stuck in a memory. Bruce shook his head slowly. To allow your perfect world to fall apart, 
to return to a reality where things almost never go your way and you rarely get the things you want, it's hard. I've been there. I had to choose. You'll never realize how hard it is until you have to make that decision for yourself. The man stared at the blonde intensely, and I hope for your sake that you never have to. Naruto was the first to look away. He'd already come to see Bruce as a man who was rarely ever phased by anything. Some of the moments that shocked everyone rarely got more than a raised eyebrow from him, which was why coming from him, those words hit hard. Whatever he'd seen there and had been forced to leave, it hadn't left him, he was still affected by it. It made him wonder if the people who had been freed from the mug and Tsukiyomi felt the same way. Sure, they would have died eventually but what difference did dying in a forced dream make from living in a world where a violent, untimely death was the inevitable fate that awaited most ninja anyway? He hadn't fallen under its influence but Gara and a few others who had, told him about their experience. For them, the world had been perfect with each of them living out their own dreams, uninfluenced by the thoughts or desires of others and he had no doubts it had been the same for everyone else. He imagined some people had probably been happy with it, even if they weren't aware of anything else, only for it to be taken away from them, leaving them back in the real world, to deal with the losses and trauma and hardship that was the aftermath of the fourth war. They must have cheered for Uzumaki Naruto, who ended the war after Ino's announcement. They must have praised the legendary Team 7, even Sasuke, for facing off against the rabbit goddess for the sake of the world. But inwardly, some, maybe even many resented them, resented him. It was in times where he really sat down and thought about the past that he saw sense in what the likes of Madara and Nagato had said to him, even if he didn't agree with them. Naruto? Diana gave him a concerned glance, noticing his abrupt silence, he gently waved her off. A plant that keeps you in a dream and another that sucks your life away. I guess we both have our fair share of nasty plant-related stuff, huh? Dinah smiled wryly. Kakashi grunted. In any case, I can see why it'd make a good means of capturing people. Hal nodded. It's not on that, Mogul has a few other mutated forms of the plant. There's one that traps you in a nightmare crafted out of your worst fears and another that keeps you in a state of berserker fury. He uses the second on the more, unwilling fighters. And the first to break minds. Kakashi nodded. A man driven mad by fear will all but worship whoever it is that saves him, even if said savior happens to be the inflictor as well. That's probably how he sees it, Hal sighed. I'm more concerned about why he does these gladiatorial events, Tsunade said. There's got to be easier ways to make a lot money in outer space than force people to fight. Capturing, imprisoning and maintaining all those captives alone is costly in itself. He can't be making all that money back with profit. I don't know, money? Hal sounded uncertain. It's not like we've ever sat down to have an interview with him, the guy's a psycho. But why haven't you lanterns stopped him yet? Kara asked. Would getting rid of him too make some power vacuum like with the Scions? I have no idea, Hal said, and even if he's not in our top 10 list of bad guys, he's still a huge enough danger that we don't confront him lightly. Warworld isn't so much of a planet as it's an armed satellite. He can wipe out a decent-sized planet with its weapons without having to send a single warrior down. Damn, Tsunade whistled. Your universe never seems to run out of impossibly dangerous people, does it? Tell me about it, Clark grumbled. If you think that's bad, you should see the Bucephalus, Kara smiled. It's not even real, Oliver said. Thank God for that by the way. At this point, I'm afraid to ask. Clark glanced at the book that still hadn't left Dinah's hands, so who's next up? Oliver grinned. He'd been waiting for an opportunity for so long, so Fago. Kara scowled. He's been next up since the Trump administration. Give the book to someone else. The book flew out of a grinning Dinah's hands to Tsunade who caught it with one hand. The blonde sighed and flipped open the book. There better not be more than one wall of text here. Everyone settled down and the screen came down before lighting up as she began to read. Chapter 20 Unrest Tsunade squinted. Huh. The story actually starts with a thanks to some guy named All Heaven Paragon for his, constructive criticism of the previous chapters? Diane blinked. There's someone writing about our lives? Dinah shook her head. Not writing about them, writing them. And there are people reviewing them? Barry couldn't believe his ears. So, Oliver let out a short, nervous laugh. There's like, a bunch of nerds holding book club meetings and shit to talk about us. Like, give this guy a reason to become a superhero by killing his loved ones and stuff? Naruto rubbed his head. I'm not sure I'm ready to dip my finger in that existential can of worms yet. Kara gave him a look. She hadn't told him he was a fictional character in their world too. Through the cockpit's window, a dark purplish marble could be seen in the distance. It was one of the very few habitable planets in the Cygnus system, Debstam. Another short space warp later they got close enough to the planet that they were about to enter the exosphere. The robotic voice of their ship's AI sounded. 
Operator, you have received a new transmission, should I play it? What are the chances that it's a bot trying to reach him about his car's extended warranty? Kara smiled at Clark. Clark rubbed his head. Don't remind me of that nonsense. I got so many of them when I was a teenager. I didn't even have a car then. Hal snorted. If you think spam calls on Earth are bad, you'd tear your hair out in space. There's billions of bots and scammers out in space. At Naruto's confirmation, a yellow-skinned man wearing a military uniform appeared on the screen of the computer on board. He should eat more ginger, Kara remarked. I don't think ginger cures yellow fever, Barry absently replied before blinking. That was a reference to the stuff, right? Kara frowned. You weren't even sure what I was talking about. You talked about eating ginger while there was a yellow man on the screen. Sue me. This planet is a restricted area. Aliens are not welcome. Return at once or we'll open fire. Right after that, the transmission ended. It was a very blunt and short message, but only moments later, the radar detected five warships. They don't waste any time, do they? Naruto chuckled. They wouldn't make good defenders if all they did was respond, Diana said. You have to take preemptive measures. It's safer to destroy an intruder in orbit than to shoot them out of the stratosphere. You can't issue a warning like that if you aren't already in a position to make good on your threat. Kakashi shrugged. See? That's why our previous ship was better. Seems like this wouldn't have happened if our ship could become invisible. The fox closed his eyes and seemingly fell asleep, ignoring him. Naruto blew out a sigh and sat up from the pilot's seat. I guess we'll just have to do it the hard way. I see you're no mood for this. Well, just stay here and protect the ship then. I'll head down alone. Kayubi was not exactly the biggest fan of missions that involved subtlety. He would much rather stay in the ship and have a nap than sneak around without doing anything, with no action. He was kind of hoping Naruto would run into some kind of trouble for him to have an excuse to let loose. Nevertheless, he did not take any actions to ruin his bounty on purpose. Taking control of the ship, the fox drove it away from the planet to avoid an altercation with the small fleet of patrol ships. As for Naruto, his white Anbu fox mask covered his face and a layer of yellow-red chakra enveloped his body, turning his previously black cloak and dark combat suit into a brightly glowing golden color. With his nine tails chakra mode, he could survive in the vacuum of space. Then, his hands went through a short sequence of hand seals and his silhouette all of a sudden disappeared. A vague distortion in the air was the only sign left of his body. It was not perfect invisibility but it was more than enough for him to infiltrate the planet undetected. It was a technique that his old mentor, Jiraiya, had created primarily to peep on women in bathhouses. Over the years, it had become a technique that Naruto relied on heavily when it came to missions that required secrecy. With his preparations ready, he exited the ship, into the outer space, and started flying towards the planet below. I'm not sure you know the paradoxical nature of what you just did, Hal remarked with a smile. Naruto raised a brow. What? Oliver pointed at the screen. Dude, you just turned to an invisible flare. That's like a silent flash grenade or, a landmine that isn't sensitive to pressure. I mean, it works doesn't it? Naruto shrugged. I've got to survive somehow and I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be doing that if I went through hostile territory while looking like a beacon. So we're just going to ignore that his teacher invented an invisibility technique just so he could invade women's privacy undetected? Dinah asked. Everyone ignored it. Asterism unsurprisingly, Naruto managed to sneak past the network of satellites surrounding the planet without being detected. He took notice though of how heavily guarded and monitored the planet was. Come to think of it, Earth was the same too. Besides the Justice League's watchtower, they had thousands of other minor satellites that one would ignore at the first glance but they were in fact all part of a bigger network. Whoever is controlling that network of satellites is a powerful man. I haven't had the chance to talk to Diana and ask her what she knows about it. I should warn her of it in case that system of satellites doesn't belong to the Justice League. The shadow government does, Oliver said. Barry frowned. Come on, man. That conspiracy again? They're not real. Yeah, that's what they want you to think. Kara tapped the side of her head. It's easier to operate when people already believe you don't exist. They run everything. It's a cabal, Barry. Consisting of the richest, most powerful people in the world. Shit, some of the heroes in the League could come from the Deep Santa. I run background checks on every aspiring League member and conduct clandestine surveillance on them for a month. Everyone's clean. Bruce said. But the money, Kara, that's enough. Clark stopped her before she could continue. She huffed, but went quiet. Bruce have him a grateful nod, but made a mental note to dissuade Kara from acting on her suspicions. Conspiracy theorists were bad enough to deal with, 
a conspiracy theorist with X-ray vision and the ability to be anywhere in the world within seconds to minutes trying to dig up secrets best left unknown, would be a nightmare. All that Naruto could see in front of his eyes was an unending mass of gray and dark purple clouds. The entire planet was covered by this blanket of clouds, he could not see anything below. When he reached the upper limit of the troposphere, nine miles above the ground, he instinctively reached out to make a connection with the nature of the planet to see its state. The deep frown creased his forehead behind the mask. This planet is dying. It's Dabstam, Hal said with a noncommittal shrug. I'm surprised it's not dead already. He sighed in sorrow. Another planet was going to be destroyed soon. Looking at the mass of dark purple clouds enveloping the planet, he wondered. What did the inhabitants do to cause this apocalypse? Are they still alive? It did not take him long to fly past the blanket of clouds and finally, he could see the real appearance of the planet. Coincidentally, he happened to fly above an urban settlement. Or better said, what was left of it. Going by the architecture of the buildings, the infrastructure he could see at a superficial glance and the vehicles sprawled on the ground he deduced that it was a fairly advanced civilization, above Earth. At least it used to be. Now, the great city was in ruins. When he got closer to the ground he could also see more corpses than he could count. Oliver grimaced. Jesus Christ, it's worse than Krypton. Even Clark and Kara had to agree. At least their people's corpses had been entombed in several feet of ice, not left laying out in the open until they rotted away. Is this a common thing with dying or dead planets? A disturbed Naruto asked Hal. The lantern nodded grimly. Not always, but yeah. You can tell when your world's nearing its doom but you can't always tell when it'll happen. Sometimes the inhabitants make themselves scarce before it even happens. Sometimes, they never realize they're in trouble until it's too late. The other heroes shared a concerned look. They loved Earth but they weren't so deluded as to think the actions humanity took weren't harming it. Pollution was the norm, people dug holes everywhere looking for oil, minerals and pretty much everything that ought to remain underground and global warming no longer raised as many alarms as it ought to anymore. Krypton had fallen without the people actively destroying its structure and something told them it was the same with Dabstam. We really have to start doing things differently on Earth, man. Barry smiled nervously. Not while the people who profit off those harmful practices have a say, Diana said sourly. The hell happened here, landing next to a dead body, he put his hand on it and closed his eyes as he cast a diagnosis jutsu, one of the most used techniques by the medic nins in his homeworld. To cast the technique itself was not difficult, even a genin could do it, but to interpret the results correctly was another matter. One had to possess knowledge of the human body to accurately diagnose an illness if there was one at all. That is to say, Naruto did not possess in-depth knowledge about the human body and its inner workings. He was not a medic, he had not received any education in that direction. However, even someone like him could understand what happened. Poison. Void. Some madman must have released a virus and massacred the entire city. Reminds me of that intergalactic war in the Quasar Galaxy 70 years ago. What happened back then? Kara looked at Hal whose ring glowed bright for a few seconds as it fed its wearer information. Nasty stuff, came his vague reply. Really nasty stuff. Even in other worlds, chemical weapons are still in use. Clark shook his head disappointedly. They are a coward's weapon, Diana said, but they are effective. War is war, Clark. Tsunade shrugged. An advantage is an advantage and poison is one of the greatest advantages you can ever get. With the right application, you can end a fight before it even begins. It's true, Bruce nodded. I nearly lost my life to one of Talia's personal guards after she put contact poison on my gloves. The moment I took them off with my hands, it got to work on me. If Dick hadn't been there, I would have died. Way to go, Bruce. Oliver sighed. I'll be sure never to touch anything with my bare hands again. The dead inhabitants of the city did not look like they were a warmongering type, they looked like tall but thin humanoids with yellow skin and red eyes, but Naruto had learned a long time ago to not judge a book by its cover. I'm a bit confused, Diana said, rubbing her chin. If they have supposedly died out, who sent Naruto that transmission? Survivors, probably? Naruto guessed. They were killed by poison, not an apocalypse. Chances are whatever was used to transmit the poison didn't get to some. Hal hummed. That's a more optimistic way of looking at it. Clark blinked. Are you kidding? What's the pessimistic way? He could have received an automated message to unregistered intruders entering the planet's orbit and have been surrounded by unmanned interceptor ships that W are either programmed to attack him if he progressed further or wouldn't have done anything since the personnel giving the commands were dead, Hal said. It happens. I guess that's true, Clark murmured. Putting his hands in a cross-shaped seal, 
one hundred shadow clones appeared next to him in a rather large plume of smoke. Spread across the planet and investigate. If you find something worth reporting, you can start dispelling one hour from now. Otherwise, keep investigating. Scatter. With a yelled, yes boss, and a body flicker movement, the one hundred clones vanished at the same time. As for the original body, he took flight and left the city, going towards a random direction too. At least they know when not to be insubordinate, Diana commented. Naruto smirked. Well I can make them stop fooling around whenever I want, I usually just don't bother since they work pretty well together when they have to. Kakashi raised a brow at him, didn't they mutiny against you once? Holy shit, what, Kara laughed. Naruto gave his teacher the middle finger with both hands. He flew for almost 1,000 miles and he encountered more than 50 cities, big and small, in his path. Dot but they were all in the same condition as the first city that he had stumbled upon. They were in ruins, with the entire population dead. Was everyone on the planet murdered with a biological weapon? Someone must have created this pandemic. There aren't many chemicals strong enough to kill a lantern, at least not natural ones, Hal said. I don't get it, are you guys immune to poisons or something? Oliver asked. Not naturally, but this isn't just a suit, Oliver. Hal gestured at his outfit. It's a passive construct, made by the ring itself. It protects us from lot in space, even the microorganisms. The only way to poison us would be to make us ingest it. Or use gas, Bruce finished for him. Poisoning food or a water body wouldn't cause such a large scale of death. It would have to be not just something airborne, but gaseous too. And I just walked into it. Naruto looked at his counterpart on the screen. I don't have a good feeling about this. Still, he could not be sure of it until he received the intel from the shadow clones that he had sent across the planet. Furthermore, he had to find the remains of the Green Lanterns as well or at least find what had caused their deaths. Although he could make hundreds of shadow clones, it was not exactly an easy task to finish this mission in a short time. It was similar to looking for a needle in a haystack. After flying for a few hours, Naruto and his shadow clones had covered the bigger part of three out of the five continents of the planet. Not the wilderness or the villages, small towns but the large urban agglomerations. Now, he was at the outskirts of a small forest, sitting with his back leaning against the trunk of a tree. He was resting. Taking out his lightwave communication device, he decided to take advantage of the resting period and call his girlfriend. Hello. A sleepy voice answered. Kara couldn't help herself. It's me. I was wondering if after all these. Kara please. Clark felt a headache approaching. My bad, I called you at the wrong time. Naruto said quickly and was about to terminate the call. NNG, don't worry. It's not night yet. I just fell asleep too early today. It's just 7 o'clock in the evening. Diana said and rubbed at her tired eyes. Must have been a lot of stress if it made someone like you fall asleep that early, Dinah remarked. Um. Diana nodded. Quote. Taking a second look at her. Naruto realized that she was not in her sleeping clothes but still in her white and gold armor. Rough day, he asked. You don't know half of it, she said. That doesn't sound good, Clark frowned. Kara snorted, coming from her. It's probably something terrible. Did a natural disaster happen or something like that? I thought with the Justice League having almost 100 members by now it would become easier for you to handle any situation that might arise. Ah, no, at a first glance, things are great. Much better than ever actually. But something is worrying me about the general population. I've, she hesitated a bit, taken a page out of your book and started spending some time on the internet as well. Dinah's lips curved into a grin. Oh, have you? Diana flushed and looked away. It's not what you're thinking. I wouldn't go searching for those, things he showed me. That's an awfully defensive answer to a question she didn't ask. Oliver ribbed her. You know, Naruto, Kara looked thoughtful. Normally I'd cuss you out for tricking Wonder Woman into becoming a porn addict. I am not. Diana glared at her. Burr that just means she'll be open to freakier stuff in the future. Kara finished excitedly. Hey, Diana, when we get home, why don't you look up two girls MMPH? No. Barry vanished from his seat and reappeared with a hand firmly on Kara's mouth. That's foul, girl. Oliver wagged his finger disapprovingly. Kara glared at the archer before her eyes went down to the hand covering her mouth. A few seconds later, spittle bubbled from between Barry's fingers and the speedster withdrew his hand with a cry. That's disgusting. The man waved his hand around frantically. Seeing a smirk appearing on his face, she added quickly. Don't grin at me like that, I didn't do it for nasty reasons like you. Naruto laughed at her reaction. No, I'm serious. 
I wanted to get more in touch with normal people and see what they think and how they look at things. To understand them better. On the internet, under the protection of anonymity, people are much more sincere than in reality. I've noticed a trend over the past two months. Something, or someone, is inciting the general opinion against metahumans. Yeah, people find it easier to speak their mind when they know they'd be able to get away with it. Oliver nodded. Can they though? Naruto asked. Not exactly, Bruce replied. But save for people who say things that out them as potentially dangerous individuals, it's almost never really worth the effort you go through just to identify an online troll. Unless you mean to dox them to prove a point, Kara pointed out. I mean, it's a crime, yeah, but nothing shuts a person up like having their personal details, social security number and home address being recited to them by the same person they were talking smack to a few minutes ago. How would you know that? Clark narrowed his eyes. Kara went quiet. Kara? He called again. Come on, Clark. You're delaying us. Oliver said impatiently. Let the lady read. I can't say I'm surprised, to be honest, Naruto replied. Imagine you're a weak and helpless person, just trying to go to work and provide for your family, for your kids, and then one day your entire workplace disappears because Superman fought against someone and demolished three buildings in the process. Or imagine you made a loan to buy yourself an expensive car and paid for it with your sweat and blood and, the next day, some crazy metahuman blows it up in a fit of anger. How would you feel? To see the result of years of work and effort disappear in the blink of an eye, just like that? Clark frowned. I don't- You threw a Ferrari at Ultra Humanite once and missed. Oliver reminded him. Imagine how the owner must have felt. And if I didn't fight with what I had, the owner wouldn't have been alive to feel bad about the car, Clark said. Half the reason I use cars and stuff is because if I decided to brute force my fights, it wouldn't be a few cars and lamp poles wrecked, it would be the whole city. As if as an afterthought, he added, and we pay reimbursement. To the city, Dinah said. Meaning unless the mayor decides to compensate the people who lost property too, they're left with nothing. Things like that get to a person. I mean, they're happy to be alive but still, they have nothing. Clark went quiet, not really having a response to that. Kara shrugged. We all mess up, we can't help it. I once took a guy out of a car accident office building and dropped him 12 miles away from his destination. I didn't even know I'd taken him the wrong way till he started complaining about taking the bus and stuff. Did you take him back? Naruto asked. No, he only started talking after I'd gone. He should have said something before. She folded her hands and looked away from Clark's weary gaze. You're one moral compromise away from becoming a villain. Oliver shook his head. Wonder Woman was momentarily silent. I understand your point. I saw many other people saying similar things on the forums. But look at the alternative. If we didn't stand up to stop the criminals, who would do it? What would happen? What's more important, some material possessions are people's lives. She took off the golden wing ornaments framing the sides of her face and buried her face in her palms tiredly. There's no real solution to this situation. As long as conflict exists, material damages are inevitable. It feels like every day, people appreciate less and less what we do to keep them safe. No matter what we do, it's never good enough. Others say that we should just kill the criminals and put them down like rabid dogs, for good, while. Are you opposed to that? Naruto suddenly asked. Yes. Bruce and Clark said at the same time. Yes. Diana said resolutely before deflating slightly. At least not as a first option. I don't kill, not until I've exhausted every other option. Not until I've seen that the person's beyond redemption. Life's too precious to waste so quickly. And that's what makes you a good person, Diana. Naruto smiled at her a tad wryly. Sadly, in his world, there were few other options than to kill. Diana shook her head slowly. No I understand that some people can't be redeemed, but nobody will ever be willing to cross that line among the Justice League. In the first place, who gives us the right to decide who gets to live and who gets to die? Once we do something like this, the government and the United Nations will finally have a pretext to openly move against us. Once that happened, it could even escalate into a civil war if worse came to worst. Civil War. Naruto scoffed. What could they do against the Justice League? You're so much more powerful than them that you can't call that a war. It would be a one-sided beatdown. Not when the government's trying their hardest to clone every leaguer with powers and sneak in plants every day, Clark said. And if we overthrew the government, we wouldn't be much different from the Justice Lords. I don't know about that. Batman discovered signs of a secret organization affiliated with the government of the USA recruiting metahumans for a suicide squad presumably preparing to move against us if the opportunity appeared. As I said, things are becoming more hectic and complicated with every passing day. And this anti-metahuman movement gets new supporters at an alarming pace. Superman and I are having it the worst. 
Many people blame him for what he did a few years ago while being mind controlled by Darkseid. As for me, one. Note the word suicide. Kakashi smiled. They're preparing people who might not survive a fight against you, to fight you. Hal raised a shoulder. Let's be real, the only reason they can even do that is because they know we don't kill. Most of our enemies would either be dead or afraid to face us if we did, Bruce admitted. But it's easy to lose yourself when you kill. The next time's easier and the time after that in one day, you'll look at yourself and realize you've become what you hated. Tsunade nodded slowly before continuing to read. Did you do something too? Not long after I left the Mishira, one of my Amazon sisters, Arisia, started an epitome. She used a virus that only affected men, trying to annihilate the male population. While we managed to defeat her quickly, before the epitome could become a pandemic, there were still many men that died, especially among the elderly. People are afraid that I'm a lunatic bound to snap one day as she did, too. If only they knew, Diana smiled bitterly. If they saw what the rest of her sisters were like, they'd consider her a saint. Sorry for complaining like that. I just, I just have no one else I could talk to about these things. And I, I work so hard, 15 to 20 hours a day, every day, fighting crime, saving people from burning houses, preventing accidents, arresting terrorists and patrolling the cities. It's not just me. The entire Justice League is like that. We work so hard to keep everyone safe. And at the end of the day, we get home just to hear people throw curses at us and TV show anchors mocking our names or costumes and criticizing everything we do. It will never be enough. Everyone stiffened when Karama's voice, clear and deep, came from Naruto's mouth. What? Diana asked. Karama let out a rumbling hum. I have lived longer than everyone here, save for the Amazon and even in her case, I have seen more of life in a century than she has in her lifetime. I know what I speak of. It is my truth I care little whether you accept it. What you will do is listen. Humans, the masses, are little more than bitter, miserable beings who will hold you up to standards even they know are impossible to meet and will still will lash out against you for not meeting up to them anyway. They will cheer for you and they will envy you. They will hate you for your power but they will wish to use you. They will banish you, but they will not leave you be. The tailed beast's chuckle was mocking and resentful and it grated at the ears of everyone in the room. Your acts of heroism, noble as they may be, ultimately an exercise in futility. They may be odd, they may whoop but in the end, it means nothing to them. Not in the long run. You will save them 99 times but they will hate you for the one time you failed. The woman you saved from a burning building will curse you for not saving her daughter, uncaring of how horribly the fire has ravaged you. It is human nature to be insatiable, to be ungrateful. You help them enough times and they become entitled and when you stop, they will vilify you. You will deny it, you will refuse it. You will believe that they may change, but in time, you will see. It may take years. You may be fortunate enough to perish before you are forced to face the truth but if not, there will be a day where you will realize that it does not matter how much you bled for them, how much you sacrificed for them, or how much you lost for them. In the end, in their eyes, it all amounts to nothing. Parlor tricks performed to hungry dogs. No one raised their voice to argue with the tailed beast. He spoke with a bitterness that only bad experience could give a person in a clarity of someone who wholeheartedly believed what they said and wouldn't change their mind for anyone. After a minute of quietness, Karama yawned. This silence is boring. Wake me up when there is death to watch. With that, his presence receded and the red bled out of Naruto's eyes. He cleared his throat a few times and grimaced. I hate when he does that. My throat hurts. He really hates us humans, doesn't he? Dinah asked quietly. Naruto thought for a moment, he respects you, he wouldn't bother saying anything otherwise, I come I help get the worst parts of him away, but even though he's mellowed out a lot now, he can't like us as a race, it's not who he is, not anymore, he respects you, for someone like him, that's probably he closest to a friendship with him you'll ever get. He spoke to Dinah but everyone knew he was talking to them all. Kara let out a sharp breath, bet it feels good though, knowing you're the only exception to that. Naruto just smiled proudly. She quickly wiped a tear that was about to fall from the corner of her eye. I'm sorry. Don't be. I'm here for you not just when we're joking and flirting around, but when you're sad and need to talk about your problems too. Naruto said kindly. After I'm done with this job I promise I'll come to visit you, okay? It will do you good to have a break from all that hero-related stuff and just relax for a day or two. She perked up at his words and her eyes brightened. Where are you now, by the way? What's your current mission? She asked. Didn't Green Lantern tell you? You should know by now how he is. It's Green Lantern Corps business, therefore, it's classified, Diana said, mimicking John Stewart's voice. Hal snorted. It's funny because guys like him are usually the life of the party when they're off duty. I don't know, Barry said quietly, still affected by the tailed beast's words. 
He seems pretty determined to be as uptight as possible. He even tried yelling at Hawk Girl a while back. I'll probably see to getting him to hang out with us when we get back home, you'll see. The two of them chuckled together. I'm investigating the death of four members of the Green Lantern Corps. They appear to have died in the Cygnus system, Milky Way Galaxy. They want me to. Naruto, what is that? Behind you, Wonder Woman suddenly yelled, greatly startling him. Diana's panicked shout didn't make Naruto jump, not at all. Kara would have laughed at him if she hadn't been as shocked as him but her surprise was less from Diana's cry and more from what emerged from behind the blonde on the screen. Hurriedly, he jumped up and flipped his body in the air. It was just in time to slip past a very thick vine-like tentacle that had tried to sneakily wrap around his neck. He had been so focused on his conversation with Wonder Woman that he had completely forgotten about his surroundings. Fuck that's gross. Naruto cursed. Gotta hang up, Diana, talk to you later. Promise. He said and tried to end the call but a mass of vine-like tentacles soundlessly fell from the crown of the tree above, right onto the back of his head. He fell on his knees and became immobile, the light wave communication device falling from his hands. Only Wonder Woman's horrified voice could be heard as she called out to him desperately. Naruto. Wake up. Naruto. A disgusting mass of tentacles covered Naruto's face and torso completely, only leaving him some space to breathe and nothing else. A shocked Tsunade mutely closed the book, signifying to the others that the chapter was over. Nobody reacted much, they were all still reeling from what they'd just seen. Even the ones who were uncomfortably familiar with it hadn't been prepared for its appearance. Naruto was the first to speak. What the hell was that? He croaked out. I got caught in seconds. That, Hal looked at him, was the Black Mercy. 4x the end.